Searching the Northwest to bring you the biggest variety in sports. Northwest Television Sports brings you the rejoicing of victory, the frustration of defeat, the drama of competition. This is Northwest Sports. Northwest Television Sports is proud to bring you Western Oregon University coming up next. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to MacArthur Field. I'm Matt Palumbo, joined alongside by Mike Brown on Valley TV 17, also on Comcast Channel 318. We've got great Northwest Athletic Conference football coming up. Only the second home game for the Western Oregon Wolves. Having a tough season so far, two and four, one and three in conference play, and they are hosting the Central Washington Wildcats, boasting a six and zero record. 4-0 in conference and a number 10 ranking. Last team time a team came in with a ranking in the top 10 was North Alabama two years ago. Western Oregon able to pull off the upset. Mike, the fog has parted ways. Football is upon us. It's a fall day, and it's a perfect day for football. Give me some of your initial thoughts as we get ready for action coming up here in just a few minutes. Well, with uh, the big win last week, uh, winning 82-21 to against Simon Frazier, you hope they can keep the momentum up and, uh, and continue what they did last week against a very tough team, a 10th ranked team in the country. Uh, it's, gonna be a, it's gonna be an uphill battle today, but with the playmakers they have across the field, uh, there's definitely a shot for this team. They're in every game. It's just they have to keep it up today. We're gonna talk about some players that are on the field that aren't on the field, but Western Oregon probably today, and in any football game, Mike, I think we talk about winning the war up front and in the trenches and they are playing a team that does not give up a lot of points very stingy in fact the second best defense in the conference the Wildcats only giving up 19 points and Western Oregon unfortunately giving up 34 points a game I think this is going to be a game of tempo if you get up and down with this team you can get in a lot of trouble for sure you want to control the ball as much as you can uh, they you know at least short passes if not just a strict strict run game in order to keep the ball away from Central Washington. The longer uh, you can hold on the ball, the less chances Central Washington has to score the ball. The name that you're going to hear the most today when we do talk about the Central Washington offense is their quarterback, Riley Hennessy. He is the player of the week in the conference. Michael Brown, he was responsible for over 300 yards of passing, ran for over 100 yards on 13 carries a week ago in their victory over Humboldt State, 55 to 27, and he was responsible for five touchdowns, and that brings me to a very important point. Tyler Johnson will not be playing today. Undisclosed reason, the second leading tackler for Western Oregon not going to be playing today. That could be a pivotal point in this game. Yeah, uh, Tyler Worf stepping in for for Tyler Johnson today, and you hope uh, that uh, there's not too much of a drop-off with the second leading tackler for Western Oregon missing the game Western today. Oregon has won the toss and elected to defer their option to the second half. Central Washington will receive and defend this end of the field. Good luck. I, I already love this referee. Calls it Washington. <laughs> Washington. <laughs> Washington. There's the Willamette River and Washington. So Western Oregon does win the coin toss. They'll elect to take the second half kickoff and they will be on defense to start this game. Obviously on the offensive side of the ball for Western Oregon, Mike, we cannot not talk about Paul Revis and Paul Revis is kind of having a dream senior season, maybe not record wise in regards to the team, but personally is leading basically statistically across the country in all receiving categories. Yeah, for sure. Averaging a little over 10 receptions per game. Uh, he is the go-to man, and he does take care of business when they go his way. Uh, you know, he looks uh, small in stature to most people, but he's very quick. And uh, when he gets the ball, he can do some things with it. And you hope today he'll be able to take off down the field in order to keep up with the high-powered offense of Central Washington. It's been three weeks since we've been back here in Monmouth, and it was a tough game to watch, losing in overtime to Humboldt State. They were the number 22 team in the country at that time, 49-48 to 48 in overtime. One of the players we did not get a chance to see, we'll get to see him today, number 28, Taylor Poyadu. And Poyadu has kind of become the workhorse in the backfield along with Teano Sweet. And Sweet played quite well in that game against Humboldt State. Getting back to Nick Duckworth, the senior quarterback for this team, is basically on the season, leads the conference in touchdown passes with 16. 
pretty impressive. We expect to see an aerial attack, maybe a very fast-paced game between two bitter rivals in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference over the last eight games. Central Washington and the Wildcats own a 5-3 and three record. Western Oregon has not beat this Wildcat team in approximately two years. Saldana kicks off deep to the Wildcats. And this game is officially underway. Good lane to run. Good special teams play from Western Oregon. An open field tackle. Decent starting field position for this Wildcat offense, the number 10 team in the country. Riley Hennessy also look for a big target in number 80, Kyle Self. He will be a primary target from the tight end position. I expect a very physical game against two teams that have a very rich history in this conference together. Wildcats will have their initial offensive possession starting at the 23-yard line. Three wide receivers in the set. Hennessy fakes the handoff. He's going to look to his right side. Open man. Looks like it's going to be on the ground, but they're going to call it a complete pass. And all the way on the far side of the field, Michael Brown, I can tell you that we did bring some binoculars this time because we were struggling with our eyesight the last time we were here. Small pickup for the Wildcats on first down. Just a quick play action pass uh, with the tempo up speed. Right now they're going. Quick play. Wildcats catch the Wolves. Sleeping on defense, and it'll be a quick first down. The first reception for Austin, the Wildcats. And Austin Purnell, mm -hmm. the running back out of the backfield, catching the ball in the flat and getting a first down. Nate Rauda with that initial reception on the first play. First down and 10, ball placed on the 38-yard line. Man is in motion. And Hennessy, who is easily a primary runner for this offense, number four, Goes up the middle behind his center and picks up three or four yards on first down. Christian Gasca on the end around, and uh, they just ran the quarterback up the middle. Six yards needed for a first down. And Hennessy goes out into the flat. He's got a man wide open with lots of green space in front of him. Easy reception for Jordan Tafuga, running back 5 foot 10, 195 pound sophomore from Anchorage, Alaska. This fast paced offense right now, they're just uh, finding open receivers and making plays down the field. Pickup of 11 on the play. Looked like there was an offside. There's a penalty flag. Looks like it's going to be a free play. Hennessy over throws his target, but we'll check the penalty. It looks like it will be on Western Oregon, possibly for being offsides. Yeah, and it looks like he was trying to lead the receiver just on his free play there, but the receiver didn't see what he, the quarterback wanted there. Offside, defense, number 69, lined up in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty, first down. <laughs> Interesting call to say lined up in the, central, in, the, in the neutral zone, Mike. I just think he moved before the ball was snapped. Technically, you would be right, sir. <laughs> Potato, potato. That's yeah, the, how the refs exactly. see it. So. Twister McComas with the penalty. It'll bring up first down and five. Faking the end around again. Hennessy runs the ball, but Western Oregon staying home. And an easy tackle made by Andrew Weber from the linebacker position. Again, the read option, and the linebacker steps up and gets the contain for a very short gain. Only a yard picked up there on first down. It'll be second down and four. Ball in Western Oregon territory as the Wildcats look to score on their opening possession. Hennessy back to the air. Quick slant over the middle. Easy target to hit right there in the middle of the field. Kyle Self wearing number 88. The six foot four senior from Vaughn, Washington. It's a quick slant and uh, Hennessy finds him right on the spot for a first down. Less than two and a half minutes gone here in the first quarter, and the Wildcats have marched down the field starting on their own 23, threatening to get into the red zone on their opening possession. Run right up the middle from the Wildcat offense, not much there. Another read option. Quarterback uh, did, didn't see anything he wanted to run with, so he gave it to the running back again for another short game, moving up to a second and seven. 
Officials timeout for injury. Player down for the Wildcats. Mike is going to take those binoculars and put them into play for the first time. Give us an update on who's down for the Wildcats. What's the number, Mike? I do not see it. All I see is 70. You see 70. Easy enough. Kyle O'Donnell, 6'3", 285-pound senior from Stanwood, Washington. Getting up, struggling. Teammates are going to take him off the field. But it is good to see him getting up quickly. Riley Hennessy, two for two. Make it three for three in the game. 28 yards. As soon as the injured player gets off the field, we expect a pretty quick play called from Central Washington because they've had time to get a play called for sure. Second down and seven, ball on the 25-yard line. Hennessy looks to switch it up, maybe at the last second. It's going to pass. Flushed out. He's on the right side on his own. He might turn it upfield and run himself. He does tuck the ball down. And very nice move from Riley Hennessy. And he was able to make Tyler Wharf miss on that play. Tyler Wharf, who's in today for Tyler Johnson, trying to make the play, but a great move by Hennessy to uh, extend the play and get the first down. Ball is on the 16-yard line. Wildcats now in the red zone, threatening to score on their opening drive. Hennessy hands it off. The initial tackle is missed from Western Oregon, but only a yard or two picked up on first down. Oscar Pinnell running around the outside, but again, yes, couldn't, couldn't make it more than a couple of yards. Good defense, good team defense by Western Oregon. And with the quick tempo back on the ball. Western Oregon's first game against Humboldt State, they were opportunistic, forcing four turnovers in that game. A turnover would be timely for Western Oregon right now as they are pinned back here in the red zone. And this number 10 team coming out, all guns blazing. Pass intended for Self, and I think Self honestly thought about the touchdown dance potentially before he caught the ball. That or the uh, safety coming up that was about <laughs> to hit him as well, but it uh, looked like he had a shot for a touchdown there, but unable to hold on to the ball. Footsteps brings up the first third down, and it'll be third down and nine. And this is where the defense has to, to step up in order to stay close to this high-powered 10th-ranked team. This is a good opportunity to set the tone for the day. It's one of those things, Mike. I mean, yeah, they marched down the field, but I mean, bend but don't break. I mean, that was the saying of the Ducks for years. Look, if they only put up three points here, potentially, it's definitely going to be a moral victory. Hennessy fakes it, and now he's going into the end zone. And it almost was picked off, and they're looking for a penalty flag there, but I think that was just good old-fashioned, good defense. Great defense by Nathan Jones, uh, reading the play perfectly. Pass to the outside, and he's he read that he read it better than the receiver broke on the route, and was able to almost get the interception. And at least uh, they're holding him to a field goal as of now. Gavin Todd will come in, attempting a 32-yard field goal. Western Oregon staving off a very quick start from the Wildcat offense. The kick is up, waiting for the. And it is no good, so Western Oregon will come out on its first offensive possession. Their defense does not break. It'll bring out Nick Duckworth and the Wolves offense and see if they can bounce back here on their opening possession on a beautiful afternoon in Monmouth, Oregon at MacArthur Field. Feels like it's been a long time since they played a game here. In fact, it's been three weeks. It's only their second home game. There'll be two more home games coming up later in November. How much of a home field advantage is it if you don't ever play at home? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's got to be nice, though, to be back. For I mean, sure. For sure. Friends and family here now get to watch them play. And hopefully they can continue. The offense, again, it's been going pretty well this season, so hopefully they can keep it up today. Duckworth will start in the shotgun. He's going to start off with three wide receivers to the bottom of your television screen. And number six, Paul Revis is on his own island, and he will be the main focus of this offense today. 
Duckworth is going to go out to the right side, and they go to Revis immediately. They get him in space, and what does Paul Revis do? He turns up field north and south and picks up a first down. It's going to be tough if uh, they leave a matchup of man-to-man -man on Revis all day. They run the play the outside again, wide open, and able to get a first down Revis, continuing to do what he's been doing all season. 11-yard pickup for the senior and the leading receiver in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference, Nick Duckworth now. One for one on the afternoon. They'll go right back to the air. They set up a nice wide receiver screen and making the first player miss. Number 16, Zach Suarez, six foot one. 195-pound senior from Sacramento, California. Suarez might get credit for a, a run on that one. Uh, I think the pass was behind the line of scrimmage, but he's able to catch it and turn it out and get five yards on the play. Good job. A team that scored 82 points a week ago in Canada at Simon Fraser. Western Oregon comes out, guns blazing with Nick Duckworth, two for two on the first two plays of the game for Western Oregon on the offensive side of the ball. Rev is coming out of the backfield now. They're looking to go deep, and they're looking in Revis's direction. Revis pulled up a little bit short. Duckworth's arm looked lively in pregame warm-ups today, and we had that chance to bump into Trey Shima Bakuro, and he was very, very complimentary to Nick Duckworth and maybe getting the ball downfield today. No wind to speak of, just a crisp fall afternoon. 9.46 remaining on the first quarter here on Valley TV. Western Oregon taking on the number 10. Central Washington Wildcats. A lot of compliments after an 82-point game. Yeah, I would bet. <laughs> 11 touchdowns tying a conference record. Duckworth now third and four ball on the 40-yard line. will have to get near the 45 to pick up the first down. Revis underneath. Screens off of his man, and he is going to be ruled down by contact, but that is first down yardage. And really the heart and soul and attitude of this team always can be found in number six. And Revis is out there man-to-man -man against Darian Williams. And Darian Williams did a really good job on that play, but Revis was able to, uh, to get control of that ball and get a first down. Good play on both sides and great play by Western Order to get that first down. Poyadu in the backfield for the first time. Has not run the ball now. Revis, they get in the ball again and almost had there been the pick there, if Blaze Manaby would have been able to pick up that block, I think Revis was going to turn that ball upfield for big yardage. Set up for it. Uh, you know, again, get him in his space and let him take off. But uh, one block missed, and it sets up a, a second and long. <laughs> Blaze Manaby coming off the field. He's kind of shaking his head at the coordinator. He thinks he says he's probably zigged when he should have zagged. Suarez and Revis will be at the bottom of your screen. Revis will be in the slot. And again, it looks like one-on-one -on -one coverage, Mike. No safety help to Revis, but Duckworth is pressured. And Duckworth lucky to hold on to that ball as the pocket collapsed around him, and he is sacked. Yeah, they, they ran the play action, read option, and it's going to be a play action pass, but pressure right up the middle and not able to get the pass off. Nick um Amua with the sack. And it sets up a third. Third and 14. 14. Ball on the 42 yard line, gonna have to get into Wildcat territory to pick up the first down here. Duckworth, he might have to run the ball. There's nowhere to go. Late flag coming on the far side and Duckworth takes a lashing as he goes down right around midfield, maybe around the 48-yard line, well short of yeah, the first down. Yeah, as he's down. trying to uh, get out of the backfield, it's, uh, it's a pretty big shot he takes from Tevin Gray. He's trying to make sure they don't get the first down, but it looks like there was some laundry on the field anyway, and the play is going to be getting called back if they decide to accept it. Holding. Offense, number 51. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Senior Bryson Dyson, 305-pound senior from David Douglas High School, with the infraction. It'll bring out Nate Osborne. 
And Duckworth uh, got out of the pocket pretty quick there. He did have a couple of receivers that seemed to come open right as the play was uh, falling apart there. And so it's going to go the ball to Central Washington. Good punt. Great hang time and a fair catch called for by the Wildcats and Tyler Hasty, Six foot, 190 pounder from Bellevue, Washington. Also played some football at Oregon State. Oregon State. Not a good week in the land of Beavers, unfortunately. Gary Anderson decides to resign in Western, or excuse me, Oregon State, kind of in disarray as a season has gone sideways and will be looking for a coach next season. A lot, of, uh, a lot of ups and downs in football around Oregon right now. Wildcats go right back to work, and Hennessy goes with that little developed screen underneath. But great defensive discipline being showed by Western Oregon. Andrew Weber with a tackle. Get another quick play to Nate Rada. Rada able to get a yard off the play, but solid defense from Western Oregon. The official scorekeeper didn't give him anything. Second down and 10 ball, still on the 15 yard line. Just under seven minutes remaining in the first quarter. Play is called. Signaled in motion now by Hennessy. Looks like it will be a run play, and it is. And the ball's on the ground. It's loose. Western Oregon looks like they fell on it. Trey B. L. Larry saying it's Western Oregon's ball. But it might have been a very fortuitous bounce. I think Hennessy came out of the bottom of this pile with the ball. I think the quarterback got it. Yeah, he did. He jumped on it. He was, he was paying attention and able to stop the turnover from happening, but it's still third and long. And to see if the defense can continue the, the momentum they have right now, be able to stop Central Washington's high-powered offense. Bad snap. Bad snap. He's... Hennessy's in trouble. He goes upfield. He does throw the ball just over Harrison's hand. But I'll tell you, now there's some more yellow on the field. But I'll tell you, Western Oregon's not playing like a team that's 2-4 and four right now. Not at all. And they've been playing great all season. They really have. Uh, just uh, in opportune times, they, they seem to go in the wrong direction. Holding. Offense. Number 77. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. James Moore with the holding penalty, and this is honestly my favorite thing in Western Oregon football, bar none. Put Paul Revis at midfield, let him get a running start on a punt, and you're gonna see one of the most exciting players, not just in Division II football, but in any level of football. I'm excited for this uh, last game. I don't think there were any punts, and so I actually <laughs> get to see uh, real special teams. It's a short kick, and I'll tell you something, Scouting reports sometimes are very good, and they made sure there was no way that Paul Revis touches that football. The punt is not all that good, Michael Brown. In fact, Western Oregon will inherit the ball in Wildcat territory, and a great start for Western Oregon here in only their second home game of this 2017 football season. Defense has done its job. The offense now has to help them out, put some points on the board. That opening possession for Central Washington. They're stalled out. They go to kick a field goal, and they kick the field goal. It's no good. Western Oregon not able to get anything on their first possession, but now inherit great field position after a defensive stand. Duckworth will take the Western Oregon offense from the 40-yard line. They'll flip it to Revis. Revis turns the corner, makes one man miss, gets out to the other corner, turns around, and another late flag being thrown in. And half of, if not the entire, Central Washington team makes sure that Paul Revis goes no further. Yeah, they know he's the man that they have to stop. He runs around being motioned to the outside, and it's just up to him to try to make some moves. Suarez blocking downfield may have been tagged with the hold Holding. downfield. Offense, number 13. Excuse me. Ten-yard penalty, repeat first down. Blaze Manaby's had a tough thing here. He's missed, he's already missed one assignment, and then he's got a holding. I mean, I, and I like all these players for Western Oregon and their receiving core. I mean, they're these small, very fast, very coordinated players. But if they're not in sequence there, that's when the penalty is going to be called. They'll back up 10 yards. It should take it to midfield. And he's blocking one direction. And as Revis is making some moves, trying to, to, to get some, uh, some play out there, uh, it does get the receiver to, to grab a little jersey to try to 
try to stop it there. Five yards for the holding penalty on Manaby. Poyadu with his first carry in the game. Tried to get it back to the original line of scrimmage, but falls just a little bit short. It'll bring up second down and 11. Kevin Haynes, the linebacker there, able to make the play just a little bit outside the line of scrimmage there, a couple yard gain. Fast, fast paced offense out here again. Yeah, we're already 10 minutes into this football game. Western Oregon trying to help out a defense that has come out very determined to stop the Central Washington offense today. Off his back foot, I got to tell you, Duckworth definitely eyed in and keyed in on that receiver and backpedaled and didn't have much heat on that throw at all. No, he, he knew he had to get the ball away. Threw it away. Fortunately for Western Oregon, there was no turnover there. Dangerous pass. This is an interesting place to be here. Kind of want your feel for it. I know you're well removed from your playing career. <laughs> but Nick Duckworth right now, I would think on the 41-yard line, isn't just looking for the marker. This might be a shot to really take it downfield because they have a good chance to pin this Central Washington team if they don't pick up the first. For sure, yeah. and they're in the position to do it. You know, starting out with good field position. So it's, it's a field position game just as much as anything else. Terrible snap, and I think there'll be no question now that they'll be punting the football. Wasting some of that field position that they had there. Low snap, they're having some troubles with the exchange right now. Too low, Duckworth doesn't totally look like he was ready for it, but he was smart enough to get on the ball and not add insult to injury. I'll make this really clear. I don't even know if somebody with a first baseman's mitt would have got that one <laughs> out of the ground. That thing didn't go over grass level. Pressure being shown from the Wildcats. Another hanging punt. And it'll be a fair catch around the 15-yard line again for the Wildcats. And I can't tell if there is a penalty flag. Yeah, they I got saw, thrown the, late saw, the, saw the flag there. I don't know what that penalty could have been for unless one of the receivers too was getting blocked out of bounds or too many men on the field. It's two options there. Unless the, uh, the person going down to make the tackle was getting blocked out of bounds and didn't get back in. But uh, we'll see here shortly. Maybe he's asking him how he takes his coffee. I have no idea. This seems like it's a rather obvious thing to whatever it is. Maybe they're going to pick the flag up, too. After the end of the kick, uh. personal foul, face mask, receiving team, number 16. Half the distance is the goal, first down. Tyron Sams gets called for a face mask. They were on the 15. That'll move the ball back to around the seven and a half yard line. This is a really interesting position for Western Oregon, in my opinion, Mike. Because Hennessy definitely is something you should fear with his feet and his arm. But they've got a chance now to dial up this defense and really make it a field position game. For sure. And you want to do that against the 10th ranked team in the country, the number one team in the GNAC. It's time to, to, to set something up here. Hennessy keeps it for himself. Hennessy will get outside the 10-yard line. Trey B.L. Larry will come up with the tackle. And there's a flag down. And I told you when we were driving down here today, I had a feeling that this was going to be a chippy game. And there's uh, some face masks already. Now we see some plays after the, after the play again. It looks like it's going to be on Central Washington. Western Oregon players are uh, pointing Yeah, Curtis the other Anderson way. was definitely pointing. And they are backing up already on the offensive side of the ball. After the play was over, personal foul, offense number 77. Half the distance to the goal, second down. James Moore with his second penalty in the first quarter. They don't say what it's for, but Central Washington now very deep in their own territory. In fact, basically, Riley Hennessy will start on his own goal line out of the shotgun. Three wide receivers out to his right. Ball is on the five yard line. See if Western. Oregon can come up with a pass rush here. And just looking for breathing room, nothing there. Suffocating defensive line play, and I think it was Worf on the tackle. Yeah, Worf making a good tackle on that read option play. They decided to run up the middle. I don't see the center back in the game yet after his earlier injury. And making the great tackle up the middle. I don't see the, the uh, center back, so 
They might be having some offensive line problems and that center is uh, not the best place to run right now. Third down and 10. Wildcats on their own eight yard line and in trouble late in the first quarter wow. here. Hennessy wants to throw the ball, has all the time, lofts it up into the air, and it's caught on the sideline by Poyadu for Western Oregon. That's not a completion. No, a great job again by the defense. He uh, had a little bit of time, but couldn't find an open receiver. All the DBs are doing a great job down the field. And uh, I think that was just as much of a throwaway as anything else. There, uh, the receiver was carry, uh, covered. So uh, the Western Oregon sideline got a chance for an awesome catch there. For the second home game, I'm just noticing a lot more camaraderie, a lot more togetherness of this unit. They seem far more together as a team. And now a special teams opportunity either for Paul Revis or for somebody on that line to bust through and possibly cause a bad kick. Snap is good, kick is away, and it's and again, they have zero intention of getting the ball anywhere near Paul Revis. I don't know that that was on purpose of him. Maybe I think he was maybe trying to get it to him, but just couldn't make it down the field that far. Well, the fun thing watching Paul when he plays football, he is kind of like a shortstop. He will literally take the short hop, make you miss, and then go. It's a dangerous play because it's bang, bang, and sometimes he doesn't even get the ball clean. But right now, Western Oregon, a great first quarter, still no score, but for the second time in a row, you inherit great field position starting in Wildcat territory. Ball on the 41 yard line on the number 10 team in the country. Man in motion. And Philip Fanumiai in on his first play. That was not Nick Duckworth. Penalty flag being thrown. The intended target definitely was interfered with. Max McIntosh will be called for the penalty. Yeah, man-to-man uh, -man down there, and he was able to, uh, to uh, get the flag. It was a pretty close play there. Looks like it was Wesley Gray, if I can see 88. That's who I saw down there, Mike. And uh, but he made a play for the ball, and they were uh, he was able to pass uh, interference, defense number 12, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. We'll go with Darian Williams. I should probably use those binoculars. <laughs> and Mike hands him to me. Here we go. Oh, that's much better. Thank you, Michael. As you can see, number 12 back on the field, Nick Duckworth. <laughs> that one I know. Yeah, that one I know too. 303 remaining in the first quarter. First down and 10, ball in the 26. Duckworth, a little bit of play action. He'll throw it to Suarez. Suarez, though, he'll corral that pass right around the first down marker. And Suarez with his second catch on the afternoon. Suarez is running nine yards on the field, stopping on a dime, and the ball is to him right as he turned around. A little bit low. Maybe had a chance to make a play after the catch, but they'll take that nine yards instead of a second and short. Keani Piceno is going to be in the slot to his right. Paul Revis, second leading receiver, number four. Piceno, look for him, a target now, as Western Oregon is in the red zone looking to strike. I saw a face mask on that one, so it's going to be another few yards. It's a pretty, uh, pretty hardcore face mask on that play. Sort of a neck-wrenching experience, I would imagine. As we wait for the ref to call the play, call the penalty. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 91. Half the distance of the goal, automatic first down. That is three face mask penalties in the first quarter. And it's a silly play. Uh, I know it's not on purpose, but the uh, defense had the running back swarm there, and he wasn't going anywhere, so it's some free yards for Western Oregon which ball. they'll use against this uh, high-powered team. Yeah, ball in the nine-yard line. It's Christian Penny with the face mask. Duckworth now going to the end zone on the fade pattern. He's going to go to Revis. 
For the second time today, Revis kind of pulled up short on the route, Duckworth intending him to go further into that route. It was something they were practicing very much on this side of the field this afternoon before action started today. It's second down and six, ball on the nine yard line. They could pick up a first down if they get inside the three yard line here, but obviously Western Oregon and this offense looking to get an early lead. And uh, last play, uh, it was a decent attempt at a pick play. So look for a pick play again if they decide to pass the ball. Easy way to get a receiver open. Duckworth, the leading. Oh, the pitch. Nobody there and a late penalty flag. Are we going to get a hold here? Yeah, it looks like there was a tackle by the offense trying to spring that play. Caleb Tingstad, tight end, looked like it might be <laughs> with the hold. It's a bummer, it was a clever play, uh, fake, fake option option. Fake option option. Taylor Poyadu. Holding, offense, number 45, 10-yard penalty, repeat, stand down. And again, one of those close ones, he was driving the, the defender, trying to, uh, Get his running back to uh, to to freedom there, <laughs> but uh, wasn't wasn't able to. Uh, and the offensive lineman the saying in Charlie Steiner's voice on ESPN, "Follow me, follow me to freedom." That's the uh, end zone. If you didn't, you don't want to you don't want to hold to get there though. <laughs> no, you can't do that. Duckworth, whoa. Duckworth definitely had to get rid of that ball. Slung it out to his left to Tingstad. And Tingstad was quite short on that play of picking up any sort of yardage. James Falkema was in there ready to make a ready to make a big play and it hurried up Duckworth. He wasn't very accurate on that pass because of uh, great defensive pressure. Pichano. Manaby and Revis are going to be on the bottom of your screen. Looks like Suarez will be on the top of the screen. Two safeties deep for the Wildcat defense as they shift. And there's going to be open field here and an opportunity. Great pass out to Picheno. Picheno makes his man miss, puts it inside the five yard line. I don't know if he gets the first down, but I will say in a game like this, field goals are not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, as we're getting to the end of the first quarter, we're scoreless. It's not going to win. But uh, they were blitzing off the corner, and they were able to get to the pass to the outside. He's running across the middle, and Pacino making some great moves, trying to get to that first down. But it does set up a fourth and fourth and goal from the six I guess it is line. fourth and goal. I didn't know they had actually got goal to goal on that. I, so. I didn't either. And they are going, Mike. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're looking only at a 23-yarder. Manabee's in motion. Duckworth now on the slant. Pass intended, I'll tell you. Blaze Manaby did come here to play football today. He's just had a tough start to the game. He's got to keep his head up, and he's going to make something big happen. And it's great. It's just a very low pass. Uh, if Whether or not he ran the route as shallow as he, as he was supposed to, either way, uh, they do not get points, and a great opportunity for points there. Low pass from the quarterback, and uh, a play that the receiver maybe should have made in the end zone. But it does give uh, Central Washington a long way to go in order to get some points. Western Oregon's defense holds up the way it has so far this game. Try to get some good field position again for the offense, and we'll see what happens. Starting on the six-yard line again. Seems to be Central Washington deep in their own territory all of this first quarter. Hennessy is going to go pass on first down, and he's flushed out, but he can turn it upfield, has a man open. Nice catch. You know, they, they draw it up that way. They want him to throw it across his body to the middle of the field, never. But he does a great job eluding the pass rush, great block on the outside, and he sees his wide receiver open in the middle of the field, makes a great pass to him. Gaska with a reception, one of his primary targets. Hennessy right back, going downfield again. And a great catch by Kyle Self. Look at the self-control with his body, and he'll get up first down yardage, and now breathing room for this Wildcat offense, which was in neutral for most of this first quarter. And this is more how they play. They like to get up and down the field. Again, nobody's rushing in too quick because you don't want to take out the, the, the quarterback and have him get outside of you and gain yards on the ground. 33-yard line there. Nice little run. 
coming from the Wildcats. They'll pick up four, possibly three or four yards there on first down. As we now are inside of a minute in a very fast paced first Michael, quarter. Scoreless. Michael Klug and the rest of the defensive line doing a good job stuff in the middle there. Three yards picked up. This possession started on their own six yard line. They've moved the ball now out to the 36. Hennessy looking to check down, looking out to the outside. Finds, finds Gaska. Gaska makes a man miss. Gaska cuts back to the middle. And terrible open field tackling, unfortunately, from Western Oregon. And that's not anything you ever want to see on tape, as it is a 64-yard touchdown. And I believe that Gaska is probably responsible for two-thirds of this on his own. Yeah, you see he's, uh, he's got man-to-man -man on the outside. The DB goes down, and it's just all him after that, making men miss over and over again. Great blocking downfield. But you see here, Derek Parnell should have had the tackle there, but wasn't able to make it, and uh, it was all guys got for that. Wow. Big, big play by the offense there. 16 seconds left in the first quarter in a scoreless game, and Christian Gaska, a 64-yard touchdown reception. Riley Hennessy, the kick is up, it is good. 7-0 Wildcats will be back for more football here on Valley 17. Well, that's one of those situations. Unfortunately, that's when you decided to go get a refreshment or to refill the potato chip bowl. You missed a pretty important play. As Riley Hennessy was able to find one of his favorite targets, Christian Gaska, on a very well-designed play. Gaska picking it up around a 20-yard reception, then turned it upfield and took his Wildcats and their number 10 ranking all the way to the end zone for the first time. And Central Washington leading seven to nothing. Kick is away. Piceno will get it right around the 10-yard line, looking to set up a good block. He's got a little bit of room to run. And whoever got him literally got him by an arm because he looked like he'd been shot out of a cannon. Western Oregon will get the ball on the 22-yard line. Marcus Schimmelfenig was on the tackle there. And a good, yeah, shoestring tackle. I can't believe you got to say the guy's name, Schimmel Fennig. Like, we didn't know if he was going to be out there. He's not even on our pronunciation list. And you just look at you. Yeah. Mike, and Mike, I love it. Look you. at him. That was a, that was a know, great tackle. That was a great play. Duckworth will come out. Close to a 0 0 game there. I thought maybe the defense was going to hold up for the whole first quarter, but uh, it's time for the offense to answer. Here we go, man. Here we They've go, had go. great field position multiple times in this first quarter. Duckworth now on his own 22 in the shotgun. He goes right back to the air. Piceno was going to definitely catch that ball. And I think two thirds of the uh, referee or the uh, referee, yeah, they, they definitely threw their penalty flags. They knew that was not good. They're fortunate that they, that they were able to, no, no. He could have gone a long way the way that play was set up. It was a fake to the outside and they're gonna run him up the, up the seam there and uh, all the, all the DVs realize they're about to get beat and they just tore him down. And now they're uh, having a conference for some reason, which I don't understand. It seemed pretty straightforward. We're going to get debriefed. Holding. Defense. Oh. Number 33. 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Tevin Gray. Maybe a lot, of, a, lot of penalty, a lot of penalties flags in this in this first quarter for that Wildcat defense. It's uh, it's allowing Western Oregon to stay in the game. I mean, it's the tenth ranked team in the country, undefeated, and Western Oregon's playing a great game thus far. It's just their mistakes that are uh, stopping them from getting any points right now. Eight seconds remaining. Ball in the 32-yard line. Poyadu gets it. He cuts back. I gotta tell you, it's one of my favorite things to watch in football, Mike, is a patient running back. 
That's well, the that end of the first quarter. They're going to take us to the end of the first quarter. It's 7 nothing Central Washington over Western Oregon. We'll be back for second quarter action here on Valley 17. Poyadu with the seven yard run on first down. It'll bring up second down and three on Western Oregon's 39 yard line as second quarter action set to get underway. Western Oregon playing a very, very good first quarter until the final 16 seconds, giving up a long touchdown score to the Wildcat offense. Nick Duckworth and Western Oregon back to work. Poyadu earned that, as far as I'm concerned, earned that run. Goes out, picks up first down yardage, gets more yards after he's touched than when he went previously, and a really nice start to see the running back have a good couple of runs right there back to back. Yeah, it looks like they were blitzing and uh, they caught him in the middle of it, able to break out and get uh, about an eight yard gain there. Fantastic run. Nearing midfield, ball will be placed on the 48 yard line. Interesting stack sets on both sides. Top and bottom of your screen with four wide receivers. Duckworth looking to go to the air. And wow. I'll tell you, that looked like he had a target all over him. And as they're throwing the quick pass out, low on the ground, he was almost down already anyway. And Tevin Gray with another. Really on the field is a completed catch. Another big tackle by Tevin Gray. You gotta be kidding. They, 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 they ruled this a completed catch, so now it's gonna be for a loss of yards. And they're saying he was down by contact, no fumble. That well, was, he, was, he was, it looked like he was down as he caught the ball anyway. His, his knee was, his on, knee was okay, on the all ground. Right, all right, okay. Duckworth's been throwing some very low passes so far this game. Well, that was a good one to be low. But unfortunately, wow. Didn't quite get the view on there. Wesley Gray was the intended target. They're saying it's low. Gray, gotta gotta teach him, Mike. I mean, when you get it, when you get it like that, you gotta sell it. <laughs> Definitely sell it. But uh, again, good plays are being called. It's just the uh, the team isn't coming up with them when they need to. And setting up a third and long, and this is not where you want to be against this defense and this team. Not at all. Revis at the bottom of your screen. Darian Williams, one-on-one. -on -one. He'll have safety help over the top. Stepping up is Duckworth. Duckworth. Completed pass to Revis, and Williams was absolutely... I mean, I, I don't want to use the word I'm going to... I won't use that word, but let's just say it was over the back. <laughs> it, was, it was very solid defense. We'll just say it that way. But uh, Revis coming back... Making a great play. Duckworth put the ball where only his receiver could catch it. And Revis made the adjustment. And on top of that, there is a penalty. Uh, great job by the offense. This should give them a first down at this point. I believe that's Revis's fourth Pass reception. Defense. Number one. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. So no 15-yard penalty on top of it. It'll just be spot foul in the first down so again right about this 40 yard line western oregon's been here quite a few times and they have to take advantage of uh, being able to move the ball on this powerhouse central washington team tight in tingstad now will be in motion coming in to block they'll give it to poyu oh a little bit of trickeration here from arn ferguson manaby tries to get it upfield And it was a great play. Uh, Duckworth uh, maybe should have put himself out there to get that, that block there. As he's coming around, Duckworth looks like a fullback but decides not to make a block there, and it's a short loss because of that. You don't want to get the quarterback hurt and have him run in front no. of a defensive lineman, no. but it was the only way that play was going to get sprung. <laughs> Got a good friend. He says, you don't want that. <laughs> you don't want that. 
Second down and 10. Ball remains on the 43-yard line, maybe closer to the 44 now. Duckworth from the shotgun, looking to the right. Finds a man, and he's very lucky it was an interception. Piceno did get his hands on the ball, but it'll bring up third down and 10 for Western Oregon, as this seems to be the little trouble spot inside, basically inside both of the 20-yard lines where the offense seems to stall out. Yeah, both teams playing break, bend don't break, and uh, which is fine. It, uh, they haven't broken yet, and it's setting up a little bit uh, inconsistent Nick Duckworth for a long third down. For the second and third highest scoring teams in the conference, Humboldt State scoring 42, Western Oregon no points so far and they average 39. There could be a lot of action left in this football game as Duckworth looks to the air and he's sacked for the third time this afternoon. Sean Elledge with the tackle for a loss and the sack and it will bring out Western Oregon who will have to punt the ball away again. Nobody open, uh, Duckworth decided to tuck it and run, but yes, Elledge with a great play in there in the middle, sending the special teams off of both teams and a change in possession shortly. And we have another penalty flag. Laundry day. <laughs> Got a false start. False start. Offense, number three, five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Could be part of the uh, the game plan. Let's get some uh, penalties going here. Slow down the uh, <laughs> slow down the Central Washington's flow in this game. It's worked so far. Yeah, you know, just like I said, they've just had they've had the opportunities to knock on the door and to put points on the board. And I think, you know, low snap. Good kick though. Great hang time. Takes a very favorable bounce inside the 20, close to the 15 yard line, and it's a similar starting field position for the Central Washington team. And again, the last play, the one thing Western Oregon can feel really good about right now is consistently they've been having great plays on defense. There was one play in this game thus far that uh, turned poorly for them on a great play, great individual play by the receiver from Central Washington, Gasca. So now, uh, again, just continue what they've been doing and they'll be fine. Hope the offense will support him at some point. Riley Hennessy with over 400 yards of offense now turning his back and looking upfield. He finds Gaska again. Gaska makes one player miss. Gaska takes it outside the 40 yard line. A 25 yard plus pickup. And he has seemed to have found his rhythm in these last few minutes. Running the rollout, it gives him more time to find an open receiver. And great job by the DBs down the field, but with no pressure getting on the quarterback, he has time to find somebody wide open and makes a good, another good play. 26 yards on first down. Smart play by Riley Hennessy. He'll keep the ball on the option. He'll pick up seven yards. Yeah, running the read option again. He decides to keep it, slides, doesn't want to get hurt. Quarterback's playing smart so far today. Playing to their averages, Central Washington averaging seven yards per play. That is twice the yards Western Oregon is doing on offense themselves this afternoon. And they have twice the yards, but only leading seven to nothing. But right now, Central Washington getting into a flow offensively under 11 minutes remaining in the first half. Trips wide receivers to the bottom of your screen and Western Oregon is showing some pressure underneath and a lot of room to run. One man to beat. Wow, they have come ready in this second quarter. Curtis Anderson saving the touchdown. And uh, yeah, just another quick slant and uh, finds a wide open uh, land to take for himself. Justin Peterson and uh, with a big pickup will take Western or Central Washington inside the red zone and knocking on the door. Is this is what you expect from them, Central Washington. Wow. What a nice play, Mike. Kyle Self, the tight end, came in to show blocking. Comes off the line. A little bit of play action. 
yeah. himself with the easy touchdown. He was able to get right up the middle. Nobody saw him. Uh, the linebackers uh, needed to step up on that one. And uh, unfortunately, they weren't able to. Easy score for Central Washington. 9.59 remaining here in the first half. Central Washington looking to tack on the extra point for a two touchdown lead. Clean snap, kick is up, and it is good. Central Washington now extending its lead 14 to nothing over Western Oregon here on Valley 17. MacArthur Field, Matt Palumbo, Mike Brown, and everybody here at KWVT bringing you great Northwest Athletic Conference action between Western Oregon and Central Washington. If you're just joining us, it was scoreless till 16 seconds remaining in the first quarter, but the highly ranked and number 10 ranked team in the country, Central Washington, has come here to Monmouth, leading by two touchdowns, 14 to nothing. Short kick, Piceno's got it, trying to turn it upfield. Here comes another penalty flag. I mean, laundry day isn't even making. I, I don't like games where I feel like a lot of the uh, action gets dictated tempo-wise by how many penalty flags are thrown. I don't know if you saw that penalty. That one deserved a flag. <laughs> okay, I didn't see it. There you go, Mike. <laughs> that one, uh, he looked like he dove on the back of the, the defender's back and tried to ride him down into the ground. You can't do it that way. All right. Point After taken. the kick it ended and during the return, Illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number 18. 10-yard penalty, first down. Joey Ruse. And again, he's just trying to make a good play. But uh, he was beat already, and you can't, uh, you can't try to take the guy down from behind like that. 14-point lead right now, or deficit for Western Oregon. Uh, you need to see them. This, this team has been up and down all season. It's time for one of those ups, hopefully, right now. Maybe, you know. Revis can to make something out of nothing right now. Duckworth from his own 12. Hard running from Western Oregon, but not much to be picked up or gained on first down. Poyadu with the carry. Able to get five yards on there. Uh, Try to bump it to the outside, but the defensive end did a good job there to, to take him down. But again, a good positive game. Five yards of play gets you a touchdown in a few minutes. <laughs> be the best way to play against these Central Washington Yeah, team we, were uh, we were talking about that whole tortoise versus the air thing. I think this is a, you're going to have to remain disciplined with what you do best. Poyudo, again, getting the ball a second time in a row, seems to be, likes the ball in bunches. It'll bring up a third down and fairly manageable. It's gonna be third and one, Mike. I mean, playbook's wide open here. Do you go to the Revis section of the playbook, which is most of it, or uh, try to run it up the middle? Like I, I, you know, be honest. You be honest. I, I want to. I want to see him hand the ball to pull you, dude. Let him go earn it. You know, they, they need to get. They don't need a moral victory here. They need to assert. You know that they can stay in this game physically. Poyadu gets it, Poyadu goes right up the middle, and he gets the first down yardage. I really think from a mentality or a psyche standpoint, Mike, you, you let him get that first down. Look what he did. He got nine yards on the first two carries. For sure. And uh, when they have three or four wide out there, it's not they can't put as many people in the box to stop the run. So it's good to try to take advantage of it. And it'll set up the play action pass, which will get these receivers down the field. But they haven't set up the ground game yet. Let's keep it going. Duckworth now on the 26-yard line and a fresh set of downs. Broken play, but Poyadu stays at home. He'll pick up yardage and get something out of nothing. And I really like the attitude, the way that he's playing the game today. And he just he looks ready on every single play. For sure. That was uh, looks like the same play they ran down on the goal line that Tingstead had a holding call on earlier, the, the fake option option. And uh, again, for four yards, just keep trying to dink and dunk. No reason to try to go high tempo against this super uh, powered. Yeah, Central you don't need Washington to do it. You, you got all three of your timeouts. I mean, I'm not saying you're going to have a nine minute possession, but I mean, look, I mean, take as much time as you can. Give your defense a rest. Time to cash in on this offense. Wow. 
Wesley Gray looks like he was shadowed by two players. It was a decent throw. Wasn't able to bring it in. It'll bring it third and seven. Solid defense on that play. He had a little bit of time to find somebody, but uh, nobody open on that play. And it uh, looks like we're going back to the air. The, the Chuck Knox days are over. <laughs> You're no kidding. Well, Duckworth in the first half, 8 of 15 for 61 yards. He's only averaging four yards downfield. He's going to have to do better than that on this third down and seven. Duckworth eyes the field, looking right. Is able to find a man wide open, and it is Revis. And I will tell you something that's definitely changed from early on in this game. Central Washington plays very, very physical. Duckworth doesn't see his first read, but has a little bit of time, escapes the pocket, finds Revis, who holds on the ball with a, a big hit, and he's able to hold on that ball. Fantastic job for Revis and the Western Oregon offense to get us to that first down. Revis actually comes, oh, I thought he came off the field for a second. I was like, no way. No, no, he doesn't. He's, he's attached to that field in the office. <laughs> Parked on the bottom of your screen on the 40-yard line. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. That's one of the most bizarre plays I've ever seen in my life. I don't even, I, I that's going to be a 41-yard touchdown return on a miscommunication. Yeah, as they're running that same play that they've been running as they pitch the ball in the middle. Bo Banner able to almost intercept it. I think they'll call that an interception and take it to the house. Or just, just short of the house. They call it just short, Mike? Did, they, did Duckworth able to oh, tackle? Oh, my apologies. That's a touchdown. Yeah, it has to be a touchdown. I'm going to tell you something. There, there's got to be a lonely feeling for number 13 in Blaze Manaby. And teammates are coming up over. He's definitely tried to play his heart out today. But he's just seems to have found himself just maybe a half step in the wrong position. I don't even think it's a half step. It's a tenth of a step. It's, yeah. it's the plays are right there, and it's just a little bit off. It's execution. It's just not there. But that execution uh, kills you when you do it the wrong way because the other team, as you. this team, able to turn it around and take it to the house. So, excuse, uh, there might be uh, some uh, colorful language. The result of the play was an interception by the defense <laughs> and a subsequent touchdown. Well, we got to use the word subsequent today. I will tell you this right now. I do like what Western Oregon is doing as a team with their teammate who's struggling right now. They told him to get the helmet back on, get ready to go back in there and play. Western Oregon in a deep hole now. Kick is up, and it is good. Central Washington exerting serious influence on this game, leading 21 to nothing over Western Oregon. We'll be back for more second quarter action here on Valley 17. Welcome back to Western Oregon University. And what was a scoreless game for 11 minutes and 44 seconds in the past nine minutes, Central Washington and this number 10 ranked team has come in and put 21 unanswered points on the board. It started off with missed tackles and a 64-yard strike to Christian Gaska, and it just culminated with a 41-yard interception return for a touchdown for the Wildcat defense, and they have put their foot down early in the second quarter. Bo Banner, the, the linebacker, looking like Bo Jackson out there, taking it to the house. And uh, again, you can't have those mistakes against this team. Put you in a giant hole to have to dig out of. And now uh, you can see if Duckworth and Revis are able to, uh, to lead the team back into this game. Try to get some points before halftime, at least, to get the, the ball rolling for second half. Western Oregon now kind of, I would say, to be honest, I'd be a little shell-shocked. For as well as they played, as excited and anticipation that they had for this afternoon, the last 10 minutes have kind of gone all the way in a bad direction. Well, I, but I really believe this. When you look at this, uh, yeah, have a good drive. Put some points on the board. You have that opening kickoff in the second half. You deferred by winning 
you know, they, they need anything they can, they need to grasp onto something right now, because they know right now, three touchdowns, they can come back. They, they average 39 points a game. Duckworth is gonna go right to the air, slant, and I think, again, I don't think that was good defense, but they're gonna say that Piceno not interfered with as he was draping a defender on his back. Uh, either way, he wasn't able to catch the ball. Uh, you just hope for a sustained drive here, use up some clock, not give Central Washington time to score before the half. Six minutes is a long time. It's a really and long time. And each team so. has all three of their timeouts. So, I mean, three wide receivers to Duckworth's left. Poyadu gets it and finds no room for sledding. Maybe a loss of one on the play. Yeah, some adjustment, adjustments have been made by Central Washington because there was some movement from the Western Oregon offense, but uh, that's all kind of gone away at this point. And uh, trying to figure out a way to get a spark again. Somebody needs to step up and make a play. Suarez, Manabe, Piceno, and Revis are going to be your four wide receivers. All four bring a different skill set. Nick Duckworth will have Poyadu in the backfield with them. It'll be third down and 11. This ball needs to get outside the 35-yard line for a first down, and we might have our first timeout of the first half, but there is more penalty flags. Too many men on the field maybe for the defense. Illegal substitution, defense, 12 players in formation, five-yard penalty, third down. And the thing that is keeping the Western Oregon team in the game right now are the penalties. Because without these penalties, this could be a, a very lopsided affair. Not that it's already not that way, but. Well, I think that we've seen in the in the game that we were here previously in the season, Mike, that this Western Oregon offense doesn't have any trouble scoring. They have gotten in their own way. We've talked about a lack of execution at very inopportune times. It's third and six. They pick up the five yards, still needing to get that ball outside the 35-yard line. Duckworth will have three wide receivers and flanked in the backfield by his running back. Paul Revis, I'm, just, I, I'm sorry, I cannot sing this kid's praises enough. He just laid out for that. Yeah, just running a quick out there. And uh, Duckworth has enough time. Great pattern, great pass, and uh, Revis lays out there. Nothing the defender can do on that. Uh, that's, that's all Revis and Duckworth. That's a great connection they have there. Sets up that first down. Revis now halfway to his basically average for a game. Five receptions here in the first half. Duckworth hurries it up. I'm going to talk about some fundamental things here, Mike, with you. And, it, it, and we've noticed it in both games. You know, it actually does really start with the exchange. And Duckworth did not get the ball cleanly. And therefore, the timing of that play is just off enough that they can't get everything out of it they want. Yeah, it's a game of seconds sometimes, and that half a second you lose while he's bobbling that ball is enough for the defenders to get in there and, and make a big play in the backfield. Western Oregon trying to get this ball near midfield and try to put some points on the board. Under four and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter. Oh my gosh, Poyadu on the halfback option pass, grossly underthrown as Revis had to become the defender. The play actually was fairly well designed, and I gotta give Poyadu credit. I don't know if he has quite the arm for it, but they really went for a home run here. And you can see he's running backwards, the ball thrown behind the line of scrimmage, allowing him to throw it downfield, and he throws it as hard as he can. Uh, Still too much hang time. Yeah, but a great job by Revis. To, uh, the play Official was, time uh, out for injury. Play was broken up, and he was able to get back in there and. Uh, stop the turnover from happening and uh, unfortunately causing an injury as well. Who's the injury? You see it? I can't see. We can see we can get up. Number nine. All right, we'll pick that up for you, everybody. Thanks, Ken. Everybody there in the booth, uh, you know, we helped. Tyler help. Hasty, the DB, uh, he was there looking to get that interception and uh, Revis came up and kind of put the hit on him to make sure that he could not take that in for the interception. Western Oregon's gonna need to get near midfield here on this third and long. It'll be nine yards to go on third down, 418. Left here in the second quarter. Coming up at halftime, president of Western Oregon University will be joining me in the booth for a halftime interview. President Rex Fuller will be with us. It'll be our third year of interviewing 
the president of Western Oregon University. We'll talk about a myriad of topics, but it'll be good to see the president. And hopefully before then, Western Oregon will have an opportunity to put some points on the board. Right now, putting up a goose egg trailing 21 to nothing. Nick Duckworth, third down and nine, Western Oregon, trying to keep the drive alive. Defensive pressure coming from the backside. And I will tell you, Nick Duckworth is in the ground. Never saw this coming. He is rattled. I, I think he's going to be OK, Mike, but he took a hit. Yeah, Kevin Haynes come from the outside, and uh, nobody picked him up. And he ripped at that ball, trying to cause a turnover. Western Oregon's lucky they did not turn the ball over there. You can't have somebody come from the blind side like that and getting a Ruling free on shot the field. from the quarterback is the quarterback's knee was down on the play. Fourth down. If anybody thought that was a fumble, that, that, would, be, <laughs> that would be comical. I mean, I know the ball came loose, but he, he was well down before the ball was jarred loose. So they've been doing these, uh, working the linebackers around different spots, trying to get to the inside. Duckworth definitely rattled on the play. Osborne kicks the ball away. End over end kick. And a very dangerous, I did not see the fair catch signal there from Central Washington, but I guess it is. Central Washington will get nice field position here. Four minutes exactly remaining in the second quarter, and they have all three of their timeouts, and they have an offense right now that has no problem moving the football. I just hope the defense can uh, hold them for these four minutes, uh, allow them to regroup at halftime. Uh, 20, 28 points, maybe a little too much to come back from at this point. It's assuming Western Oregon's offense shows up from where they've been this season. Riley Hennessy out of the shotgun. Play action. He's looking to get downfield, but he'll come back. And a great last second adjustment coming from Nathan Jones to break up that pass. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be a complete pass. There's Intended plenty of target. time looking around, Tony but uh, yeah, Jones able to just get his hand up there. A big mitt and knock the ball down, setting up a second and 10. I think if you're Western Oregon, I'm trying to find him. I might want the binoculars. I'm not going to take him. I'd just be looking for Christian Gaska, number 81. Riley Hennessy's favorite target here in the first half. Wow. Western Oregon kind of caught with their guard down. And Rauda with the catch, able to make it down the field yeah, again. Yeah, Parnell. Play action pass, and it was enough to get the safety to, or excuse me, the corner to come up. And uh, yeah, 30 more yards down the field. Riley Hennessy a week ago. Responsible for five touchdowns, 330 plus yards, I believe, in the air. An additional 118, I believe, on the ground. A very dangerous weapon leading this number 10 team. Now he'll flush out of the pocket, turn the ball. He's got a man deep. Larry on the defense, Trey Biel Larry, able to shield his man. And that was very, very close to uh, seeing another score as well. Yeah, another man-to-man uh, -man situation, but the ball was overthrown. And why wouldn't you at that position in the game, all your timeouts remaining, not take that chance yeah. as well as they're playing? Hennessy's been connecting with everybody all day, so uh, and he had time, just uh, not able to connect. Hennessy faking everybody out, maybe even his own teammates. Keeps the ball on the quarterback keeper. It'll bring up a third and long. Another read option play. And uh, they haven't been going to it as much after having 100 yards rushing last game. Uh, doesn't look like he's getting close to that right now, but. Uh, he's 11 to 15 in the game. He's averaging 14 yards of reception right no now. No reason to run the ball right now. No reason now. to run the ball at all right now. <laughs> Third and six on the 28. Hennessy's going to have to pass. And Kyle Self leapfrogs everybody. Even the crowd oohed and awed when he hurdled the would-be defender. 
and they run the place pass over the middle he catches the ball and sees one man in front of him and jumps over him wow that's an athlete it's a very athletic play I'm waiting for uh, the future where everybody figures out how to stop that play and a lot of guys get knocked out of the air. <laughs> Hasn't quite synced up yet to everyone. Everybody knows how to make that tackle yet. Wildcat offense in the red zone on the 15 yard line. And I, I'm not at all surprised they hand the ball off here because now they're just looking at it going like, look, we can literally hold this ball the remainder of the half and score. And yeah, if you can go into the locker room up 28 to nothing, they know their job's been done for the first half. Can't really ask for anything else at this point. Right now, I'm actually watching Nick Duckworth, and he is throwing the ball maybe about six or seven yards. And after he throws the ball, is checking his right shoulder. We will monitor that as we go into the second half. Maybe we'll see Philip Fanumiai. Read option for Hennessy. Hennessy goes right up the middle near first down yardage. But as I continue to watch Nick Duckworth, I will not be at all surprised if we see number 15, Philip Fanumiai, come into the game. And that will bring a very different wrinkle to this offense. Unless they, uh, they have some low grade, good for your Well, body I'll tell you right now, Nick Duckworth just went to the sideline and they're letting, and they're letting Fanumiai continue to throw the ball, so. It, it's gonna, they're gonna have to work on him at halftime. Third and four on the nine yard line. Hennessy takes it under a minute and really brilliant clock management coming from the coaching staff of Central Washington. Heiberger came in, I haven't had to call his name much here today, but he got in and he, another player for Western Oregon, somebody holding their arm, number 94. Blaine Burnett coming off the field, and he's got some sort of stinger or arm issue on the right side. Heiberger got up a little bit Time slow out. as well, so. Central Washington, they're first. We'll step away, we'll give you the remainder of the first half coming up here in Valley 17. Four seconds remaining in the first half. Western Oregon in a deep hole. It's first down and six for the Wildcat offense. Already leading by three scores and looking to cap off a very, very strong second quarter. And they went into that timeout. And they dialed up a wrinkle that we had not seen yet today. Touchdown will go to Samuel Sanchez. Freshman from Poolsbo, Washington and O'Day High School. Yeah, obviously there was some miscommunication. The tight end, nobody covered him and uh, able to just fall into the flat and be wide open and score that touchdown. Not the, not the defense you wanted out of the break. It's the strangest thing I can say about this. I, I know it's 28 to nothing or 27 to nothing. And it does feels like Western Oregon, it, and, and you could say this about any game and any sport, it's a handful of plays. Oh, for sure. For and, I sure. Think, and, and, and I think in this first half that's probably the most indicative thing I could ever see kick is up and the kick is good Western Central Washington excuse me <laughs> leading 28 to nothing we'll be back for the remainder of the second quarter here on Valley 17 all righty everybody Western Oregon in a deep deep hole and a lot of trouble trailing 28 to nothing they have really kind of got put down for just a few seconds here in this first half and it really has been just really a handful of plays and like mike has been saying you know not half steps we're talking just really small fractional things that are about execution good practice and discipline western oregon's been on the wrong side of it skip and a hop Pacheno will field it at the 20. He tries to turn it outside. And that's the second time today that Pacheno's literally been tripped up by his shoestrings. Lucas Peterson with that uh, great tackle down the field. Uh, looked like he was about to break something and uh, unfortunately not. Now with 34 seconds, you have to find out if uh, they're gonna try to go down the field and set anything up or uh, be conservative and take it to the halftime with a quarterback change, I believe. We're going to see here. It is Philip Fanumiai out there. So the big wrinkle here, Mike, you haven't had a chance to see Philip play. Philip definitely is a read option quarterback. So he can run the ball. 
Uh, he can certainly change the tempo of this offense and does have a fairly good arm and can get the ball down the field. Poyadu with a lot of room running forward. He'll pick up first down yardage. Now Western needs to hurry up here and they got to get this going. And this is one of the things I like. Philip Funumiai actually engineered an upset of a number 16 North Alabama two years ago. And this is exactly what you saw. A team that came to the line ready to go and looking to take it back down. He wants to throw the ball. He goes to Pacheno. And Pacheno, all he needed to do there, they're probably going to call a timeout here. We'll keep it here. All Pacheno needed to do there was go Time out of bounds. Western Oregon. Uh, uh, which I first. And I, I, we're not gonna, if we can see a replay, that's fine. If we can't, I mean, Pacheno definitely had room to The go. only thing I was going to say is with 15 seconds left in the half and three timeouts at the time, I mean, either way, you can step out of bounds there, but you're not going to be able to get all three timeouts used at the after this play. So uh, while well, you're right, any other time, if there was five more seconds left on the clock, he'd want to get out of bounds right away. But it's not necessary on this play. They're not going to – they only have a couple more plays left in this half. Now, craziness could happen, and you'll need an extra timeout, you know, in five minutes after some weird delay or something. Yeah. It's totally a possibility. But right now, he's just trying to make a play and uh, set themselves up for uh, at least a uh, field goal range or uh, a heave at the end of the half. So I've, I've kind of surveyed the field. I don't see Nick Duckworth. I'm not going to say that he's not going to play the remainder of today, but Philip Fanumiai is in the backfield wearing number 15. Has come out with... I think on sometimes I've heard on a bigger TV broadcast, they speak of a man called Dr. Feelgood. And uh, sometimes they take care of him in the halftime and he may be out here later on. That'd be great, that'd be great. Hopefully Nick Duckworth will see some second half action. Fanumiai gonna have to... Revis on Revis, the catch there. Revis with the catch. Of course, Revis. Fantastic play by Fanumiai. That's, able eight, to, that's uh, eight seconds on the clock. I don't know if he'll call the time out or if he'll just down out. here. Western Oregon, they're second. I want to hang here. I, I, I really, I'll tell you something. I, I, I'll, I'll give Western Oregon the coaching stat, and I think I might give the players the majority of the credit. In the last three minutes in a game where you were trailing by four touchdowns, they don't act like it. They act like they're going to go out there, they're going to execute. They've moved the ball now to the 35-yard line. And this is an interesting play here, Mike. They've got a kicker in Saldana that has been highly accurate on the season, kicking it nearly an 80% clip as a field goal kicker. Just anything will help here. Do you take one shot to the end zone on this play right here? Yeah, what do you have to lose? You have, you have nothing to lose here. I mean, they can go for a field goal and get three points, still be down by 25, but they could still possibly even get another six or seven yards, 10 yards, set up an easier try for him right now. With eight seconds, you can run a play and get down and call a timeout as long as nobody's running around the field trying to make extra yards after, after the first contact. Understood. So Fanumiai is going to have three wide receivers out to his right. At the bottom of your screen is Suarez, and they're showing pressure. And going over the top, Suarez looks it in. And I will tell you right now, Philip Fanumiai put that ball on the money, but Central Washington and that defensive backfield that likes to hit breaks it up. Fanumiai throwing the ball down the field, and it looks like Suarez has been able to do something. But Huerta there with a fantastic play as a safety. He had some, uh, the cornerback had some help down the field, and Huerta, the safety, able to come over and make a great play to stop that completion. Official timeout for injury. Near the goal line is another Central Washington player down. Best I can tell, I'm looking at number 12. I'll let the binoculars give us our line of sight. Darian Williams. I can't see him. Looks like it's Darian Williams down. But that was a great play just now by everybody. It was a good, really, really good pass with the Fanumi I making a great pass down the sideline in between the safety and the corner. But again, the safety able to come up. So what are you going to do here, Mike? Are you looking at Hail Mary? Or are you looking at some sort of hook and ladder with Revis? Uh, what, what, what kind of play do you want to run here? Four seconds remaining in a game that, again, has kind of gone sideways and gone sour over the last 15 minutes. They could get some momentum here. They get the opening kickoff to start that second half. What would you run here? If Saldana has a 50-yarder in him, then uh, I'd take the <laughs> kick just to get some points on the board. But it doesn't look like it. It looks like we're going to go for 
Hail Mary or uh, hopefully maybe get a, a penalty and uh, get some better field you're position. Right. We'll see you're what right. happens. You're right. The half cannot end on a defensive penalty. Great call by Mike. Fanumi, I flushed out. He's not going to run. He does want to throw this ball, but he is going to run. He'll take it himself. He'll run out of bounds. They don't get anything but a first down out of it, but Fanumi I comes into the game and puts a wrinkle into this offense. Western Oregon will have to make big adjustments going into the second half, trailing 28-0 to the number 10 Central Washington Wildcats. When we come back, it will be President Rex Fuller an interview about Western Oregon and the course it is headed. We'll be right back here on Valley 17. Welcome back to Western Oregon University and Monmouth, Oregon. I am joined alongside by the president of Western Oregon University. It's good to see you once again. It's Rex Fuller. I'm Matt Palumbo. Good we're going to gonna basically kind of, I don't know if we'll call it a, a state of the union, but we're going to kind of give you a lay of the land of what's going on here at Western Oregon. Thank you. Kids have been back in school for a month. Uh, talk to me about it. I mean, I know it's always, I think always those first few weeks are such a, a fun time of promise and, and what, what, what's to come. Well, thanks for that. Uh, yes, it's been about a month, and uh, our first home game was just before classes started, and so here we are about four weeks later in a beautiful day, and uh, um, we're uh, doing well in terms of our enrollment. It's uh, you know right where we expect it to be, and uh, we're welcoming a new freshman class, uh, but we have a number of new building projects that are going on this year that will uh, keep us uh, very busy uh, beyond our athletic programs. I'm going to talk about the building projects with you later. I actually want to ask you about the enrollment. You and I had an opportunity, I think it was last spring, to meet. Uh, you know, individually, and we talked about that. Talk about what programs or incentives have been put in place that that enrollment has increased, and we've definitely talked in the past about that influence of the, the students coming from Oregon and then being first-time college students and their families. Well, thank you for that. Uh, we still serve primarily Oregonians. About 78% of our enrollment is residential uh, from the state of Oregon. Uh, and our freshman class in terms of uh, high school is about flat, which is uh, coming out of the high school population. But we're real pleased that our transfers are up. And so we're seeing more transfers from uh, Oregon schools. Uh, so they're going to the uh, community colleges on the Oregon Promise and then transitioning over to Western. And uh, that's a key part of our strategy going forward as well. Um, so we really are um, trying to diversify our streams of enrollment. And uh, uh, about 50% of our students are still first gens. Uh, so they'll be the first in their families to graduate. Wow. Uh, and that makes a big difference for uh, the, the entire uh, state of Oregon. Population right now, just around 5,000 total students? Uh, just over 5,500 oh, head 50, count. 55 now, wow. And, okay. and then. Uh, uh, again, the vast majority of those are from Oregon. Uh, we also have a strong enrollment from California, Washington, and, and Hawaii. When you were referencing something earlier, what do you attribute those kids that are coming from uh, the Oregon schools? And tell me a little bit about the Promise program. I'm not familiar with it, so we can yeah. let other people know about it. Uh, the Oregon Promise program uh, provides funding for students to attend a community college. Uh, and then we are... Uh, um, then accepting them as uh, transfers as either freshmen or sophomores. Uh, but we also started what we call the Jump Start program, which said that if a student had an Oregon Promise letter, uh, we would accept that as, uh, as evidence and we would provide financial aid for them as well. So we wanted them to uh, check out the opportunity to come to a four year first. If they do go to a two year, we want to be a place where they transfer easily. Uh, but we also want to encourage them to consider Western as a four year stop. Wonderful. You've obviously referenced the building projects. Yeah. I know that we were starting those projects a year ago. We've had a year worth of growth. Are there more to speak of now? Yeah. Well, we're real pleased that we opened our health center. Uh, so that opened in June, and we had the official opening uh, uh, last month. Uh, going forward, we will be remodeling the Oregon Military Academy, which we now uh, own uh, as an institution. Uh, the military uh, department has moved out to Umatilla. Uh, so we'll remodel that. We'll probably put our admissions and financial aid in there. Uh, we also have a major remodel of our science building that will go on this year. So those are two projects that are uh, sort of coming forward here in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. In that science building, the renovations, what are they going to be able to do? Is it going to be able to bring technology to the building, or is it going to exactly. is it going to be infrastructure? What's it going to do for the students here and the faculty? It started out as primarily a, a HVAC and safety upgrade. Uh, we've uh, add, added some uh, funding to it so that the learning spaces will be modernized as well. Uh, so it'll serve our science students uh, for the next 20 years plus. And uh, it referred to as our natural science programs are in that building. Uh, so it'll uh, re refresh uh, all of the HVAC and electrical, but it'll also create uh, learning spaces that are uh, really uh, uh, cutting edge. 
I know that you and I have talked about this over the last few years. I, I always like this particular question. I don't want to end with it. I always think it's going to segue into something else. What do you say to a first gen or what do you say to a prospective student that wants to come to school here at Western Oregon? Because when I come to Monmouth, I get a warm feeling. I've been doing it for several years. I'm not a student, but I can understand when somebody comes here for the first time with the expansion of the campus and these buildings that what you have to offer is something far different than we could say a decade ago. Yeah, I think that's true. Uh, we really build on the community that we have here. Um, uh, it goes back for generations. Uh, but when I invite parents and students to campus, uh, I, first of all, for many of them, um, it's be the first student in their family to go to college. So I tell them, celebrate that moment, enjoy that. Um, but then I also say for us, student success means you're going to graduate. Uh, so our uh, challenge to our students and their parents is come here with the, the intent to graduate. Uh, that, that's what student success means. It means enrolling, finding your major, finding your passion, uh, but then exiting with a degree that allows you to do whatever uh, comes next, whether it's your first professional position, as it is for many of our students, in fact, the majority of them, uh, or going on to grad school. Uh, but the idea is to finish with a degree. With that in mind, give me two or three points about what it is that you do as that plan to execute to say, hey, if you're coming here, it's not just to come and get that education, it's to leave with that degree, to go out and be able to do something. Kind of give me a, maybe a two or three prong attack well, to that. Well, we've always provided student services that help students uh, orient to the college uh, scene, so to speak, and those are, that's critical for first gens. But the other thing we're doing is we're trying to get students to create their own roadmap uh, early in their career. You know, start to say, uh, what's a four-year plan look like? And what are the steps along the way that will allow me to exit with that degree? Uh, and so we find that if students create a, uh, a relationship with a faculty member and an advisor and are intentional. Uh, that makes a big difference when they're struggling on a given exam and they will have bad days, they'll have good days. Uh, the key is to uh, persevere uh, and that's where having that plan as a four-year plan uh, carries them through those uh, difficult moments. I know you've been here roughly in the neighborhood of three, three and a half years now? In my third year, yes. You're in your third year. Discuss uh, with any prospective students or people that are here or people that are interested in Western Oregon some of the highlights of the Rex Fuller you know, presidency, things that you're very proud of so far that you've initiated and that you look forward to seeing going forward. I think the biggest thing we've done is we've kind of recalibrated our mission uh, and we have a new mission statement that really talks about a transformative educational experience for the reasons I've already talked about. Um, we also have uh, established a strategic plan that has five uh, initiatives. The first is student success. Uh, talked about that. The other is academic excellence. Uh, you have to have academic programs that are cutting edge and state of the art and we uh, recruit faculty who help our students engage in activities. For example, uh, one of the things we do uh, better than many universities is get, engage our students in undergraduate research. So faculty here have about 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio, so students get to know faculty, they engage in activities throughout their career so that when they graduate, uh, they not only have a grade point and a diploma, but they've done things that uh, help them with whatever's next. They've created research projects, they've uh, uh, done art programs, that, or they've done theater programs, they've been engaged in active learning, as we call it, or high impact practices. Uh, those are things that I think that uh, Western has done, but I think we're kind of putting them front and center. Uh, and then the other piece is community engagement. We've got to be relevant to our community. So internships, uh, service learning projects, getting the students out in communities, uh, and helping the, you know, the, this larger region of Oregon just become that much better. Looking to the future, you mentioned it's a four-year plan for a student. You as the president and this university and the faculty that you work with at such a you know intimate level here because of the size of the school. If we were going to look forward to the future, what is the vision for Western Oregon, say, three to five years down the road? Well, I think size-wise, we'll always be in that five to 7,000 range. Uh, I think the key will be for us always to uh, be in that size university because of the reasons we've uh, identified. Uh, we think that we have a, a deeper and more complete developmental experience because of that size ratio. So we want to maintain that. Um, I think we need to create some other opportunities for new degree programs. I think we have to be, keep our eye on what society needs. Uh, we may be taking a look at some uh, graduate degree programs as well as we look at uh, what's needed uh, in, in the area. Um, the other thing I, I hope we take a hard look at is there are 500,000 Oregonians who have some college but no degree. Uh, they got interrupted in life. Uh, I hope we can figure out a way to provide uh, ways in which those who wish to come back and get that degree have a, a pathway to do so. 
Is there any last thoughts you have for us before we part ways today? I've enjoyed the time, but I mean, yeah. if there's anything, I mean, this is an open forum and an yeah. opportunity yeah. for you to say anything that you want about Western Oregon. That's the platform that we're so lucky to have with KWVT and Comcast and having the special deal to do the football games. We also want to use it as a platform to promote Western Oregon and the educational opportunities available here. Well, thank you, Matt. I, I guess in closing, what I would say is one of the things that I think higher education has always been uh, featured, if you will, is the fact that students have to find the space and the, where they'll be successful. And in that sense, uh, a choice, uh, a vote with your feet a bit. Um, and uh, we take that seriously. We want students to come check it out, uh, walk the campus, come visit us. Uh, unannounced. Uh, come see if this community feels right for you because um you know, my wife and I have uh, two grown daughters. They both went to college. They went to different kinds of colleges, and they made good choices. Uh, one of them went to a school just like uh, Western, and another went to a, a different size institution. They both made good choices, but the point being, come check it out. Walk to campus, talk to people, talk to students. When you're on campus, talk to students who are here and say, what's your experience like? Because that's what uh, would be your, uh, your next year should you decide to come and uh, be part of our uh, community here. Well, for a third year, we've had the opportunity to have President Rex Fuller with us. I enjoyed our time again today. Hopefully, uh, some points get put up in yeah. the second half. It's been a tough 28 nothing deficit, but uh, maybe we'll see you later on in the season. If not, uh, have a wonderful scholastic school year and all the success that Western Oregon deserves. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Rex. Pleasure. Hey, have a great day. Thank you. We'll be back for more second half action and a recap of the first half here on Valley 17. We're approaching the second half. We'll have a little first half recap. Mike Brown, Matt Palumbo. We're here at Western Oregon University. Mike, I mean, look, we saw, like I said, 11 minutes and 44 seconds of scoreless football. And then the next thing that we saw, <laughs> you know, was kind of just, uh, it felt like a downhill, almost kind of like a, you know, snowball effect. For sure. And uh, once the momentum started going for Central Washington, it was tough to keep up for Western Oregon. They're, an, they're playing a team that they're outmatched out by, but uh, they were holding close for a while. They just couldn't keep it up, and now you just got to hope they can kind of crawl back in this game at this point. We were obviously perusing the sideline. Uh, we did not see number 12 Nick Duckworth come out. He suffered an injury on a blindsided sack by uh, Central Washington, so it'll be Philip Fanumiai that'll come out and lead the offense. We're going to go look through. I'm just going to kind of see here. They did give us some halftime statistics. I mean, how many times, and I think it was three times, Western Oregon inherited that ball right around the 40-yard line and was not able to do anything with it and put points on the board. And I think once it happened the second time, uh, it really, really affected them maybe mentally. For sure. And, uh, of course, it will. If, if, if you don't have any success, it's tough to keep, the, uh, keep the, your heads up. The thing is, with Fanumiai coming in at this point, you saw a couple of times they were running the – the read option and able to get some positive plays out of it and since that seems to be his part of the playbook maybe they can get some some ground game going uh you know you, you want to go to revis as much as you can too it's he's your best weapon but uh there hasn't been any consistent action from the passing game as well today so there's it, you might need to change it i up. was actually looking at that and i mean i'm looking at it right now and it says net passing yard central washington 253 that means hennessy's on his way to a potentially 500 yard day and i think one of the things that we haven't even talked about and there's a reason we haven't talked about it there's been no defensive pressure coming from the line or the linebacking core of western oregon and if they are going to get back in this game they're going to have to create that and you see the loss of Tyler Johnson not being here today. Another great playmaker on the defense. Uh, the Humboldt State game, the last time they were at home, he was all over the field making plays everywhere. And without that here today, no one's really stepped up in order to, to, to take off. Everybody's playing really hard. Bo Heiberger's kind of been maybe exploited because, you know, he's like not he's not a one-man show, but he is that best next best player out there. We've seen Tyler Wharf make a couple of good plays but also be out of position a couple of times in that lack of experience. For sure. And uh, now we have to see uh, if, if, you know, the younger guys are going to step up and make some plays to try to get them back in the game. Fortunately, Western Oregon gets the ball first. Let's see if, if they can do something. You know, we we're hoping that they can. On what's turning out to be a really nice day, you hope they can uh, take advantage of this. <laughs> yeah, it was murky, uh, soupy, and foggy, but we're getting ready for a second-half kickoff. We'll head back down to the field, and we'll get ready for second-half action here. Mike, come on in. There's 15 minutes on the clock. Hey, there he is. <laughs> Big head for sure. I love it. <laughs> That's Mike's nickname from, uh, well, we'd say a generation ago. 
back in the old days. <laughs> yeah, they, High school. Yeah, they do, they do feel like they are, we are far removed. Central Washington kicks it away. It is a short kick. Picheno comes underneath it. Cutting it upfield, gets to the 25-yard line. He's got more room, makes another man miss, covers it up well, almost takes it out to the 30-yard line, and he wanted a face mask play as he tosses the ball over to the official in a small bit of disgust. Hoping to get that uh, targeting call is what he was looking for, I think, there. And haven't seen those uh, both of the games that we've done so far, fortunately. Everybody's playing a good, solid game on defense and not getting those type of penalties. Good to see Lots West of face masks. Yeah, good to see Western Oregon. Blaine Burnett, number 94. I see him on the sideline. Looks like he might have got that arm worked on at halftime. Looks like he might be ready to go in the second half on the defensive side of the ball. But it will be Philip Fanumia in the shotgun. He keeps it himself, trying to run behind the offensive line. Was looking potentially to pitch that ball away, but will tuck it down and he will get short gain on first down. Nicholas Ama on the tackle, stretching the play out to the sideline. Uh, option play that just didn't uh, open up for either the running back or the quarterback. He decided to hold on to it, play it safe, and uh, sets up a second and 10. Revis is at the bottom of your television screen. Revis had five receptions. I make it six in the first half. Fanumiai is low and into the ground. The intended target was Suarez. On that quick rollout, just not able to get a completion. Uh, you're going to see a lot more action, a uh, lot more option, I think, uh, through Fanumiai as opposed to Duckworth, who can get, just sit back and throw the ball down the field a lot more. He's more used to that, for sure. Good to see Tyler Hasty out on the field as well. For Central Washington, he was hurt late in the second half or second quarter by Paul Revis breaking up a play on a potential interception. Now he is guarding Suarez on the bottom of your screen. Fanumiai sticks it in the pocket, finds Revis. Revis at the first down marker, needs to stop. Hopefully the forward momentum will carry him to first down yardage, but the pinball that is Paul Revis was looking to see if he could get more. Yeah, he had about a 14-yard gain. It ended up with a 12-yard gain, but it's more than 10. Uh, looks like uh, may have seen some uh, more laundry on the ground on that play, too, though. There is a penalty flag. It is on the 40-yard line. Indication to me that it's probably a defensive penalty at this point, but again, maybe now we're consulting about a late lunch. Ham and cheese on rye, whatever it is. They're After the play was over, on sportsmanlike conduct, Offense, number 13, headbutt. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, this is a time in the game where I'm going to be nice and say, you know, unfortunate penalty for Western Oregon. So, Mike, do I understand correctly that they're going to give him the first down? Well, it was after the play. So it's after the play. Yeah. But instead of being ball around the 40, it'll be placed on the 25. Correct. That would be what we call two steps forward or one step back. I don't even know. I know you're a Paul Abdul fan. You tell me. <laughs> DJ Scat Cat in the house. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, uh, they get another play of one yards. It's uh, trying to get the ball up the middle right now. They're not able to do too much with it. I was going to think of a million different Paul Abdul song puns, but uh, I don't think I have it in me right now. But keep it to yourself. <laughs> Second down and 12 ball on the 23-yard line. A minute and a half almost gone here in the third quarter. Western Oregon trailing 13 to nothing. They'll hand the ball off on the ground. And I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you do here. I mean, I know you have to be true to what you are, but Philip Fanumiai, I've seen him play enough football. He can get this ball downfield. I don't know if it's an offensive line thing, but I think it's just time to, you know, maybe be a little bit more of a risk taker here. For sure. Uh, you, you know, what you, you're the backup. You don't get a chance to play as much. You're going to try to make some plays. You want to stay within the offense as much as you possibly can. But he wants to make plays too, you know. You don't get so many of them. Kenny really? Portera in for the first time today, wearing number five for Western Oregon. Going to need to get this ball to the 35-yard line to pick up first down yardage. Fanumiai will have three wide receivers to his right. Fanumiai steps in the pocket. He's trying to go on his own. He's trying to keep his feet. He's looking for that marker. And I will give Philip Fanumiai the credit for that play. He recognized immediately that he had room to run. Took off on the left side. 
and picked up 15 big yards. Yeah, great job back there. Steve Young, Randall Cunningham-esque, breaking some tackles and getting down the field. And a great block down the field by Revis on that. Able to spring him open for that extra four yards he needed for the first down. In my past, watching Philip Fanumiai play, a fairly demonstrative player for a quarterback as well, so he'll bring some emotional leadership to this team. As he kept the ball there, was going to give the ball off to the tailback, keeps it and loses yards on the play. And I think that's the tough thing when you do run this spread option like this, Mike, is if you aren't in there running it consistently, you don't know exactly you know, when you're going to keep it in there or when you're going to pull it out. Well, you get to see the, the defense react to you, to you pretending to hand the ball off enough times you start to get their tells you're able to make a play off of it yeah you need more more reps against that team um, he's had some successful plays you know it's just uh, picking up those little tells you don't get as many opportunities for that sets up plays like this now with a second and long Fanumi I struggling again with that transition and I and I wonder at times I guess when you say you are the backup how much work have you done with this unit so you do know what is it, what's your tendency, what is it? I think they should have had plenty, to be honest, at this point, yeah. at this point in the season. Um, it's just whether or not one, the running back maybe not reading the play the correct way and not giving up the ball fast enough either himself. But definitely not flowing very, very well right now. Wildcats showing a little bit of pressure here, moving their defensive players around. And right now, a little bit of confusion coming from Fanumiai. And we're looking under Seven seconds, six seconds. Fanumiai gets it off in plenty of time, but he has got nowhere to go. Pressure coming everywhere, throwing behind him. And I think this is going to be an interception, Mike. I think it's going to be an interception. Ref's talking about it. Looks like they gave it to him. We're going to take a look as he's, here. As he's going to the outside, he throws it back across against his body, which you're not supposed to do. And a great diving play by Portera. Por Portera was the intended target. I think Hasty comes Excuse up. Me. That's right. I think Hasty comes up with the interception. And the number 10 team in the country is acting like it now, leading by four touchdowns. And they will get a timely turnover on Western Oregon's first possession. And Riley Hennessy is looking to put an exclamation point early in the third quarter. They'll do the play action. Hennessy has all the time, lofting it over the top. Ball's up, and good coverage there by Trebio Larry and Nathan Jones to break up that play. Fantastic job. They run with the play action, and he's got plenty of time back there. The Trebio Larry was really playing a good D, and then the center fielder there knocking the ball away, able to set up a second down. Really can't fault Central Washington and the Wildcats to be looking to go up there immediately and put the points on the board. They've had big plays out of their receiving core all day today. Hennessy now with pressure finally coming, but he'll get the ball away. And it's Gaska at the 20-yard line for a 21-yard pickup. And I mean, it's pitch and catch for these guys. He's so wide open. And he's have, he has too much time uh, to sit back there and find wide open receivers, which he's doing over and over again right now. And the uh, defense uh, seems a little bit down right now, not able to make a stop. Just trying to see who's going to step up right now to, to cause, a, I cause even, some kind I, of change. I haven't even figured out what Austin Purnell does for them as a tailback. I mean, he's had the ball maybe five or six times, but I mean, this offense gets to throw the ball and Purnell gets it on. Oh, he doesn't. They fake it to him. And a great catch. Wow. Oof. Just, that was a beautiful pass. Justin Peterson takes it inside the five-yard line. You ask what uh, Purnell does. He's a great decoy right now, and it gets uh, <laughs> a lot of man-to-man one-on-one plays out there, and they're able to take advantage of it and get a first down. Chris Adamo being picked on there, the defensive back. Although but, it looks like there's a penalty. Ineligible player downfield, offense. Number 77, five-yard penalty, first down. Number 77, James Moore is going to have some explaining to do for Central Washington when they look at film next week. That's, I believe, his fourth penalty this afternoon he's had maybe he had his own special route he wanted to run there <laughs> but uh, it wasn't the time or place oh, he's not an eligible receiver we know that it ruined a really good play yep. defense, Western defense. Defense, Western defense. Defense, Western defense. 
Genesee will give it to Purnell this time. Heiberger will come up with the tackle. Just running up the gut. Heiberger doing the thing he does in the middle of the field there, able to make a stop, setting up a second and long, not able to get back to the original line of scrimmage yet. Second and 12 ball on the 23-yard line after the interception from the Wildcat defense. Fanumiai throwing behind himself to Potera. Potera gets his hands on it, and it was picked off by the Wildcats, who are knocking on the door to score once again. Hennessy now steps up in the pocket. Man, wide open. It is Gaska. And Gaska has, and this is something you don't want to see. Gaska scores the touchdown, and there are three players there. Larry. Well, they're rolling out, yeah. and he sees them wide open. Uh, 21, Nathan Jones uh, didn't drop back enough in his zone there. Uh, they, they knew exactly what they wanted to do that play, and they were able to, to finish off with a touchdown there. Not the way the defense wanted to start the second half for Western Oregon. Well, what's really tough there is that you're seeing a little bit of finger pointing coming now. Dominic Harrison was back there with Trey B.L. Larry as well as Nathan Jones, and they all kind of put their fingers out about, you're right, where the person was supposed to be. Kick is no good. That's the only thing that probably has not gone right for Central Washington, leading 34 to nothing here. We'll be back for more third quarter action on Valley 17. Nine minutes and five seconds here left in the third quarter in a undecidedly or decidedly one-sided game as the number 10 team in the country, Central Washington, has come to Monmouth, Oregon today, and they are pitching a shutout, 34 to nothing. They missed their extra point. They could not get on the board for most of that first quarter, but since then, it's been what they want, when they want, how they want. And it's frustrating for the Western Oregon team right now. They've been playing very well, but just having very specific bad plays. And one out of ten bad plays is gets you down 34 to nothing. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Very bad play. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Frankly, what I find amazing about this game right now is that Western Oregon has dominated time of possession. They've had the ball. I just they've it, it, it's kind of staggering. If they're at 19 minutes, you know we're what roughly 36 minutes into the game. I mean, that, that, they, that means early on they were even had the ball more. Don't really like the stat sheet that we're looking at here. I mean, it's a tough one to kind of to, to get an idea, but it's just like Western Oregon really has had the chances to convert. And like you've just said, it's like they've kind of had that moment right when you're not supposed to have it. And it kind of, with that kind of, it's bit them this afternoon. You can't do that against a team this good at Central Washington. No, and they, and they, and they play the part of, of the favorite. Fanumiai is struggling right now, and I, I also think personally that they need to let him throw the football. I, there's no, you got no chance to get back into the game or to get any momentum if you're not going to let him throw the ball. Um, yeah, well, and as the time runs out, you're going to have to start putting the ball up in order to try to get back in the game if there is any possibility of that at this point. Not likely, realistically, but... Uh, Anything can happen. Remember, it was 0-0 up until the end of the first quarter. There's 28 <laughs> points scored within a quarter's, uh, yeah, no, I, I quarter's length by one team. And they so. are going to go to the air now. Fanumiai steps up. Wanted to go to Revis, but he was thinking back shoulder. Had the man-to-man -man out there. Not a terrible idea, but that's just the uh, timing that those two people are going to have, not playing together as much as Duckworth and Revis does. It's third down and 17, and right now I think your job here is maybe to pick up half of the yardage you need to get to first down, give some more room to your punter, and then you know hope that you can get a defensive stand because right now you know they're stalled out trying to get used to this new quarter. The last time you said something like that, Central uh, pulled off a 65-yard uh, play, so maybe uh, <laughs> stop that. <laughs> Fanumiai goes underneath, gets it to Picheno. Picheno gets it back out to about the original line of scrimmage as he's forced out of bounds. And on fourth, uh, third and that long, the uh, defense sat back, let all the plays happen in front of them, uh, didn't let anybody get behind them, and it sets up a fourth down. And uh, 
defense did its job in Western Oregon. Uh, go back to the sideline, try to regroup for the next drive. Tyler Hasty back deep for Central Washington. Looking to expect a punt. Punt is up. Good kick. Hasty will call for a fair catch. He'll pick the ball up right at the 30 yard line. He seems to have parked himself there multiple times today as the Wildcat offense comes back onto the field. Going through some of the statistics, Mike, I know my computer's far away. Gaska, five receptions, 149 yards, two touchdowns, one for 65 yards. <laughs> Averaging 29.8 yards per catch. Not too shabby. Yeah, and this is what they do. They move the ball. Western Oregon had to play flawless today, and uh, thus far they definitely have not. It's able to uh, let Central Washington put the hammer down so far. Hennessy goes back to the air, and I think what's even more impressive now that I look at it, he's now a whopping 17 for 24. He now has over 300 yards, four touchdowns, and no interceptions. That means in the last two weeks, he's responsible for nine touchdowns. And I kind of, when we were talking about it, I didn't want to say, like, look, there's nobody else out here, but it was like, he's it. If you can't get him contained, you're going to have a real issue on your hands. And he's not just in a rhythm. He's out there looking like he's just having a fun day of practice. Yeah, his flow is uh, working really well right now. Wow, look at that. And we were just talking about it. I mean, he, his confidence was on full display. If we can get a replay of this, I'd love your breakdown. Well, it looked like it was uh, another read option. And then they have a, another option where he can pass to the outside. And when he sees that corner come up to to make that tackle, he throws it out to the receiver, and able to get 10 yards down the field for a touchdown, or first down, excuse me. Riley just stays in there, goes right back to the air, and I, will, I won't say that the defensive backfield for the defense of Western Oregon is gassed, but they look like they have just taken about as much as they can he take. He has plenty of time back there, and as they're running a zone, a very, very soft zone, uh, you know, all the time in the world <laughs> and got guys trying to find a place in the zone it's going to be a first down every time riley looking for more gets it to get gets it to gaska gaska no it was not gaska i just see that one and i get Looks so like excited Rauda. nate Rauda was able to get that play down the field again just uh, plenty of time for hennessy to sit back there and find wide open receivers the dbs are gassed right now they can't seem to cover any of the receivers, and Central Washington's just pounding them down the field. That's three straight, I believe, receptions. 20 plus receptions, 20 yards plus receptions as well. Hennessy now 19 of 26 for 327. And why wouldn't you run the ball? Looks like Hassani Childs will get the ball a right nice up the little, middle. Nice little Barry Sanders swim move up the middle. Got him an extra couple of yards on that one. It's a good job by the running back trying to get some extra yards where he probably shouldn't have. They'll give it right back to him, but the defensive line will be able to suffocate the running back and stop the Central Washington juggernaut from going back into the end zone. 5'7", 173, I think he might be listed a little bit heavy, possibly, because he's a, he's a smaller guy out there, but very quick and able to uh, get a couple of positive yards on that play. You're saying that's with pads and helmet. I mean, they may have a really, really good off-season workout program, and he put 20, yards of, 20 pounds of uh, <laughs> muscle on there. Yeah, It's gone away as the season's gone. Riley Hennessy going to go to the end zone. He's got a man open. And they're going to signal touchdown. The touchdown goes to JoJo Hiel. Is that what it is, number 10? Yeah, it looked like it. JoJo Hiel is running uh, kind of a little bit of a wheel route and uh, just uh, wide open in the back of the end zone. It's really not fair, Mike, when you have a linebacker out there in Brian Sarbeck trying to take on a receiver like that. No, no, and he's uh, a little bit out of position. But again, that wheel route set him up. Uh, I think he had plenty of time to throw that ball. He could have threw it second earlier and still got a touchdown. It's, they're just uh, unstoppable right now. Now we're faking it. It's going to be a two-point conversion. 
And I, I don't I don't fault him for it. I think this is the type of game where you get to work on anything you want to work on moving forward, looking to go to 7-0 and 5-0 and and in conference play. 5-0-3 remaining in the third quarter, 42 to nothing. Central Washington over Western Oregon. We'll be back for more action here on Valley 17. Welcome back to MacArthur Field, Monmouth, Oregon. I'm Matt Palumbo. I'm joined alongside by Mike Brown, my counterpart. Started off as a very, very nice day. And for most of the first quarter, it was looking like a beautiful day. Unfortunately, since then, sort of a nightmare in broad daylight as Blaze Manavi takes the kickoff and then looked like got his bell just wrong. He's up and moving, but took a pretty vicious hit. Yeah, those uh, kickoff guys were just running their lanes, and uh, he was running a stretch play and was eventually just popped and uh, didn't quite get to the 20-yard line, setting up uh, setting up a big, big-time drive for uh, Western Oregon if they want to get back in this game. First time today, I'm seeing in the backfield, Mike, I'm seeing Devin Forte, running back 5'10", sophomore out of Canby, Oregon, and Canby High School. He'll get the ball, they'll run him off the left side, and he'll pick up not very much. James Falcoma in there for the play again. He's been all over the field today on their defense and Central Washington setting up another second and long for Western Oregon. Ball on the 18 yard line, Fanumiai signaling out the play to his team. Off his back foot, he'll get it to Piceno. Piceno looks like he's going to be able to get the reception, but he'll be down on his own contact because knees were down. Yeah, and just more, uh, more of a timing issue probably for them. Uh, Throwing it low doesn't give him a chance to make any play after he catches the ball because he was wide open there in the middle of the field. But on the positive side, it does set up a short and long instead of the third and long. Excuse me, third and short instead of third and long. Wesley Gray on the bottom of your screen, wearing number 88. Fanumiai gives it to his tailback. His tailback tries to cut it up the middle. Maybe pick up a couple yards on the play, but Western Oregon, a three and out. And maybe they were trying to surprise him there, thinking it'd be passing distance and uh, try to trick him up the middle. But unfortunately, the defense with Jackson Horder and the rest of them were able to uh, make the stop and set up another punt. Hasty now moving to the 40 yard line. Hasn't really had a chance to run one back today. Booming kick. And he'll, he'll end up taking a fair catch, and he'll have to back up a few steps, take it at the 36-yard line. Great punt from Western Oregon. I know those are little things, but they're going to have to take anything they can out of this because for about two and a half quarters now, they have really been kind of at the end of a barrel. Well, you know, they have to, they have to learn. They have to step up, pay attention to what's going on, learn from their mistakes, stay alert, keep playing. Central isn't quitting. They're continuing to go. They just went for two up by 41 points, but they weren't ready on defense for that play. They have to be ready for anything. The game's not over, and they need to continue to play. And these younger guys are going to get in the game now and get a chance to play and show what they can do when they don't normally get in the game. You know me and my uh, love affair for the game of basketball. This is going to feel a little bit like a Golden State Warrior game. I have a feeling what's going to happen here is we're going to see Riley Hennessy probably through the remainder of this third quarter, and then he's going to go Steph Curry on his own. That's, that's, and he should. It's his choice. It's coach's choice. You just don't want him to get injured when they're uh, doing so well right now when the game's pretty much out of hand. I need to do a little research on this, Mike, but I, the playoff system in the D2 level, I don't know if it's maybe more than eight teams get in. And 24. A, 24 get in? 24. And you, you got They have like a preliminary round, yeah. kind of how like the Oregon State okay. High School does. There you go. Big running lane up the middle, taking it out to midfield. It'll be about a nine-yard run for first down yardage and the Wildcat offense. 
And as Asani runs up the middle again, nobody hits him until he's about six yards down the field. Uh, yeah, I make a joke about uh, his size, but he really might be that 175. He was very strong getting through and knocking off people off of uh, being tackled there. Ball exactly at midfield. As a team, 20 rushes for 67 yards in this Wildcat offense. And the pitch and catch continues. They're lucky not to get a Yeah, I was going to say, Dominique Harrison, I can tell you, I think he's one of the more feisty guys on that defensive side, and he's been chomping at the bit to hit somebody all day. And he does, and then uh, Weber comes in at the end to try to clean it up, and uh, eh, just a little bit of a shove. But they will call that sometimes, so he has to be aware and stay disciplined and not touch somebody when they're out of bounds. But no harm, no foul there. So Seven-yard the pick up on first down. It'll bring up second down and three on the 43-yard line. Self now in motion on the right side of the offensive line. Riley Hennessy, play action. Man wide open in the flat. And the ball popped out. I think people are just happy of the uh, big hit there, okay. the effort. Just, okay, good. I, I, I couldn't tell. It was a very strange reaction by the crowd. And More read option, but uh, this is just definitely just a play action pass. Wide open on the outside, but yeah, good pop. Good pop there from Brian Sarback again. We've heard his name a couple times in the last couple of drives. He's running around the field trying to make a play. I don't think I can say his game's quiet anymore. Nate Rauda, number 11, is on the bottom of the screen for Central Washington has played one heck of a football game as a wide receiver. I know we've given a lot of praise to Self and to Gauska, and rightfully so, but Rauda really playing himself into a great game. And Riley Hennessy keeping it himself, runs to the outside, and he's taken down by the defensive back, Jones, number 21, Nathan Jones. Keeping the clock moving. Probably could get down a little bit quicker there at the end of this play as he's running. Uh, tries to make a move, uh, but good, solid tackle by Nathan Jones there. Uh, stop the play and take us to the fourth quarter. Yeah, I was going to say, we were watching the highlights last night, Mike, you and I, or yeah, Thursday night, excuse me, of Carson Wentz. Yeah, you, look, man, you're the franchise. Get down. Don't lead with that shoulder. Hey, Mr. Riley Hennessy, you're the man. Get down. He's already slid earlier today. We'll be back for the fourth quarter. It's Central Washington leading 42 to nothing over Western Oregon here on Valley 17. Houston. Houston. <laughs> no, we don't have a problem. Mike, welcome back to Western Oregon. Fourth quarter about ready to start. Mike and I are learning about live television all the time. Be careful. Live Mike. Who's Houston? <laughs> it's second down and seven on the 33-yard line. Riley Hennessy, I do believe, is still in this football game, and I couldn't give you a good reason why. Maybe that, but... Padding some stats. You know, I was saying, uh, hopefully we can get a uh, Buffalo-Houston scenario here where Frank Reich came back against Houston back in the, back in the day in the biggest comeback ever at the time. Yeah, you know, again, I, I, I always hasten to use this term, but I'm, I'm going to use it. Uh, this is a teachable moment for a younger team. Arn Ferguson's been here for 13 years as the head coach, and I believe 10 of those 13 seasons have been winning seasons. And right now, you know, they're on the bad end of a season right now that has kind of gone probably a direction they weren't going to, you know, they didn't want to go. They were picked fourth in this conference uh, by all the pundits. Wonderful play by Rowder to pick it up. And this is what I'm telling you right now, in the you know, in the grass is Riley Hennessy. And I hate to say it, I wouldn't let him pay, play one more down after that. They run another play action pass, and as he's thrown to the backside, Heiberger and the rest of the defense is there to make a great play. Curtis Anderson there as well. Good job by the defense. Setting up that fourth down. And then hopefully maybe that was their last drive. Let him finish off his drive. Sure. Take him into the fourth quarter. We'll see. We'll, we'll find out the next next time around. Nathan Jones is going to be inside his own 10-yard line. Or is it Revis? I'm sorry. Got to get the binoculars out. Mike, help me out here. It is Revis. I'm sorry. I saw Nathan Jones back there immediately. Delay of game. 
kicking team. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. My binoculars, bring your own binoculars. These are special binoculars. These are your dad's. These are very nice. They got sentimental value. Fair enough. There you go. There you go. There you go. Number six. It's Paul Revis. I got to tell you, these things are amazing. Oh, you can see uh, clear past the uh, Cascade Mountains. Ooh, can I? Okay, there's a football game. I need to get serious. Paul Revis back deep after the penalty and the delay of game. Everybody running away. Ball goes into the end zone. They'll touch that back, and Western Oregon will take over on offense. And I really, I'm going to tell you this right now. Your Central Washington, you got plenty to play for. I want to not let you score. Western Oregon's got to, they got to do it. It's, it, it, it. It is a matter of pride. It's a matter of staying in it for the 60 minutes. Go put some points on the board. Go feel good about some part of the day. Oh, for sure. You know, it, it's something to build on. You're just trying to build, build, build. Because in a situation like this, it may not matter this week, but next week we have two more games this year, excuse me, three more games this season yep. where they will need to implement the things they're going to learn in these situations. Well, after scoring 82 points a week ago, Western Oregon has yet to score this afternoon. I mean, a two-game average of 41 points doesn't sound so bad, but... They definitely need to see what they can get rolling here and build towards what they're going to have to do in practice to finish out this season. There'll be two remaining home games in November here on Valley 17, 13.36 in the clock running here in the fourth quarter in a very one-sided, dominating game from Central Washington. Usually a very, very competitive game against two teams that I think have a genuine respect and dislike for each other but clearly the better team and the number 10 team today came in here to prove a point just uh, run up the middle there and you see he tries to uh, try to get some extra yards it's a good play for seven yards it's uh, it's just tough because uh, you need uh, many many more of those to get back in the game uh, but hopefully we can get a score down this play you know after the last time they played where it was just a seven point game I was expecting a lot more out of Western Oregon in this game, though. And they did come out for the first quarter and look strong, but they could not keep it up. Suarez will get the reception from Fanumiai. Very, very late flag going to be called, and it looks like there might be a taunting penalty or some sort of extracurricular activity after Fanumiai throws the ball. And uh, it looks like they might call a late hit there on Amua. Close. Definitely a close call, but uh, you know, as he gets the pass down the field, that flag did Personal come foul, out. rough in the passer. Defense, number 99, late hit to the quarterback. The 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the play, automatic first down. Big play coming there on the reception and the penalty. And I gotta tell you, I think if you wear the number 99, you just have to be big. You have to be big, and uh, he, he fits that bill. <laughs> huge. The big guy there He's in the huge. middle. <laughs> Fanumiai now in Wildcat territory trying to get this Western Oregon offense on the board. Wesley Gray wanted to run there. And I'll tell you, Mike, you and I only played football one year together. And I remember Coach Larry Bowman quite well. <laughs> Coach Bowman would say, look, Boys, if you can put one arm up there, you can put both up there. And I feel like Gray tried to run underneath that, but wasn't able to get there as they were going for the home run. You got down the field like that kid did? No, you were, fa <laughs> you were faster than me, man. No, you're right, though. I, I, I do know what you're saying. It was just, uh, again, with all, all the backups out here, it's just uh, communication issues and timing issues that uh, it's tough to, to make up during the game itself. I. Uh, I know he's going to be mad at me when I do this, but uh, your predecessor who sat to the left of me, I remember uh, playing football with Steve Sutton as well. Yes. Uh, one of our colleagues. And uh, I remember we had a jamboree uh, our freshman year, and we uh, played out at Lake Ridge High School. Okay. And Steve fancied himself that he loved the game of football, and, you know, we were undersized, let's just put it that mildly, you know, and we really probably didn't have the acumen nor the physical skill set you need to play. As Fanumiai is sacked, on third and nine. Fantastic. And I went from the, the outside I, there real quick by yeah, tapping. Yeah, I, no, I appreciate you. I'm a little storytelling time. And Steve's going to really not like this. Now go ahead. Fanumi I goes down. But Steve uh, thought he would play in that jamboree. 
and Steve didn't play. And all I remember is him reaching down to the ground and wiping mud on his actual pants to make it look like he played because <laughs> he didn't want to go home and tell his parents that he didn't play in the game. That's a sad story to tell to the whole oh, world I know, right now. Steve. No. <laughs> Steve will tell me I told it terrible. I miss him. I hope he's doing well. It was clay. It wasn't dirt. <laughs> oh, not that way of telling the story? Nah, yeah, no. I'm sure I, I'm sure I will be. Uh, I am suffering from a, 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 a pretty severe case of jet lag or what some people call dysania is what I, I, I learned earlier today, which is kind of not wanting to get out of bed. But I'm glad I did. It's been a beautiful day. The football at times, I honestly, Mike, I think for about 15 minutes was really clean and fun and, and very promising. You know, Western Oregon, you know, has to finish out a game that I think nobody enjoys being on the bad side, you know, of a loss like this. But uh, new quarterback looks like, doesn't it, Mike? It looks like it couldn't quite get his. Uh, looks like number six. As he hands. I don't. Off I, the don't ball I don't. There. I don't think it's Bubby Brister. Tommy Hayes, <laughs> Bubby Brister. <laughs> let's, let's keep bringing all the references from 1992. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're not young anymore. We're not old. <laughs> Very Greg Lloyd-like tackle on that play just <laughs> oh, now. Oh, jeez. There you go. Okay, we're done with that. Now it's <laughs> under 11 minutes <laughs> remaining here. Second down and eight as Hayes comes into the game, looking over to the sideline as Riley Hennessy heads to the sideline. And not a terrible day. 24 of 32 for 364 yards. Five touchdowns through the air. Hennessy also ran the ball nine times for 30 yards. Heiberger with a vicious tackle. Yeah, Hassani Childs uh, trying to get up into the hole, but Heiberger and the rest of the defense able to, uh, to pull him back. And again, that is where he's a little bit smaller stature. Heiberger, the starting middle linebacker there, taking him down for, for a loss. So interestingly enough, kind of looking forward, and I'm going to do that for Central Washington, the number 10 team in the country. North Alabama was here two years ago. North Alabama is actually going to be traveling uh, to Ellensburg and playing against this 10th ranked team in the country next week. That should be an interesting matchup. It'll obviously be a non-conference game, but uh, maybe a lesser known fact to you that North Alabama team, Mike, is the winningest team in college athletics in the state of Alabama, even more than the Crimson Tide. Sound, it much. sounds as if they're not a fan of the Pacific Northwest uh, after the last time they came here and played Western Oregon, and we'll see what happens when they go to Central because they, they are clicking right now, and uh, it's going to be a big game. After a wonderful game that we saw three weeks ago, Western Oregon will head on to the road next week. They will be at Humboldt State, and then they got to go down to Tarlington State, and they will play in the state of Texas, and we will finish up with two home games on Valley TV. Those games will be oh, on the fourth. Kicking team, number 26, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Those games will be on the 4th of November. It'll be a 105 p.m. kickoff. Azusa Pacific will come into town, and then Western Oregon will finish their regular season at home against Simon Frazier. Central Washington will be kicking the ball out of their own end zone. End over end kick. Revis is going to try to get his hands on it. Got a good initial block. Looks to the sideline going off to the right. And the ball is loose. And I really can't blame Revis. It's part of what you have to live with with him. Revis has got eight receptions for 96 yards. But he ends up coughing up the ball and he, giving the ball right back to Central Washington. He's just trying to make a good play there. And unfortunately, uh, not able to hold on to the ball. And you see the uh, Central Washington sidelines ecstatic, trying to keep this, trying to keep this uh, shutout going. And uh, right now, uh, they they are continuing it. Hayes now with his second opportunity to come out and lead the Wildcat offense. High snap, but Hayes takes care of that no problem, keeps it himself. He picks up great yards on first down. You're going to see a pretty base offense at this point. Uh, you know, these are the backups, so you still want to let them, you know, go through the offense, but there'll be a limited amount. 
with the score where it is. Uh, there's no comeback for, for Western at this point. So, and I guess I missed the penalty there. Yeah. Taking a look at things here. Up-to-date stats. Really some telling things. 431 yards of total offense for the Wildcats. Western Oregon able only to muster a little over 200. And I think this tells you just how good Central Washington's actually played also on the defensive side of the ball. They have 13 tackles today, four losses. Been very, very active both sides of the football today. Control they, the game. Yep. It's a domination. You see Asani Childs uh, getting down the field and bouncing off of tackles. Continuing what he's been doing since he came in the game, the stretching it to the outside. Tries to get to that corner and pretty much has it, but uh, fortunately for Western Oregon, they were able to make the tackle, but first down for Central. Ball placed at the 39-yard line. Clock continues to run nearly halfway through the fourth quarter. Hayes will send a man in motion. He'll hand it off, getting a good block and turning the ball upfield. Central Washington nearly picks up another first down. Yeah, Tony Archie on the play there, able to get to the outside as they run this sweep and uh, trying to set up some blocks and uh, finally gets a couple there, able to get down the field for about eight yards. And uh, he's a redshirt freshman, so you'll see this is the time we're going to get some backups in the game and kind of kind of get them all over the field, let them get a touch, some game action. The way they've been playing all season, most of these guys are getting some reps during the games, uh, you know, as they as they beat down a lot of these teams, and uh, it's good for the future for their team. Third down and two. Hayes will keep it himself, turn it up field, and actually, I'd say a fairly good little runner is Hayes. I don't know how little he is. Tommy Hayes, six foot four, 220 pounds. I don't think that's little, I guess. No, and uh, as they run again, they run this read option. Everybody dives into the middle, and uh, he's going to try to make some yards. Uh, able to get a good gain, and uh, they're pounding it down the field right now. So what was the, uh, you said you had some water called Dasani, or you had to wake up <laughs> this morning? I didn't catch that earlier. Well, there's this wonderful little e game you play in broadcasting. And it's my favorite thing in the world. No, I did not have any of that. It sounds terrible. Desania is just the, you know, not wanting to get out of bed. Is there a water called Dasani? Yes, there is. <laughs> Second down and seven. Hayes and the Wildcat offense pretty much, I think, will. Well, at this point, they're just uh, milking the clock. Yeah, as, I mean, as they're much just as looking they at it. I mean, just get the hikes off, make sure everybody gets off the field as clean as you can and not hurt. And the and, uh, position coaches are still uh, watching to make sure everybody is doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Are they, you, regardless of the score, they're going to uh, let them know about any mistakes they're making at this point. So that's why you see everybody playing hard. Well, I mean, I don't know how to say this. I mean, I, I mean again, I, I You know, I, actually, real quick, yeah. I need to apologize because when this kid first came in, I uh, may have called him a little bit small, but he is running over Plays people like a Mack right truck. now. He just runs everybody over. Look at him. He just took Trey B.L. Larry and put him in the ground. Yeah, he's pounding in there. That's uh, quite a fantastic run by Hassan Childs. I, I, I was thinking about it, actually. You know, I know that you know, we're here you know, on behalf, you could say, of Western Oregon, but you can kind of tell this Central Washington team is feeling themselves right now in a good way. They're about ready to move 7-0 and you know, on the season. That's a perfect season. Uh, that's 5-0 and in the conference. You've got kind of control of everything. Your foot's on the pedal. You have a chance to have a very special football season, and you can tell the way they're playing right now. Uh, they're very focused right now. As uh, as they have a little bit of a botched play there, right, as you say that. But you're right, though. They, uh, they're they in control. They're clicking. Uh, it was a little bit of a slow start for them today. Western came out. They're at home. Western Oregon's at home today trying to put up a fight, and they did for a while, but Central was able to take control and uh, do what most people figured would happen today. Western Oregon is just the wild card in this. Some, they, they rise up and play amazing against some of the best teams, and sometimes they play bad against really bad teams. Uh, this is one of those games for a while you thought they were going to be able to stay in it, but they just weren't. 
I think we referenced it earlier, you know, today a couple of times. I, I, I guess now we were really kind of seeing what the maybe the glaring, you know, thing that's wow, you're yeah, you can't say anything about him, Mike. <laughs> In fact, don't go say hi to him after the game. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, Western Oregon, you know, it, 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 again, really, really a tough thing, but the attrition, you know, or the loss of did he hear me? I Did think he, he, I think, I think he might, right I, Yeah, I think he got in his head. I think he's got in the headset. Yeah, but the, Tyler Johnson obviously was a big miss today. Sure. Again, we're we're not sure if uh, you know exactly the nature of why he's not uh, available for Western Oregon today. But uh, a tough loss for their defense. Probably somebody that calls out a lot of the other teams' plays and instructs obviously the defensive side of the ball to what their assignments are. As we move under three minutes and thirty seconds remaining here. Hayes holding on to the ball. It was third and one, and it looks like it will be a defensive stop for Western Oregon. And as they uh, run another read option, Skyland Johnson was, uh, excuse me, Skyland O'Brien was there to make a good stop. And uh, again, everybody's still trying. Everybody's playing well. Andrew Weber and the rest of the defense out there making good plays. Uh, it just hasn't been enough all day to, uh, to make any kind of dent against this Central Washington powerhouse. Hayes will have it with fourth and one on the 26, trying to get it down to the 25 yard and move the chains and get a new set of downs. Busted play there, and it doesn't look like he's gonna pick up the yards. It will be a defensive hold as long as there are no penalties at the end of this play. Apparently Hayes doesn't go down either. And uh, they went for it on fourth down there in order to try to uh, run out the rest of the clock. But uh, good job by the defense. Some good news. Looking at the sideline of Western Oregon, I do see number 12 on the sideline. I do see Nick Duckworth. I don't know if he's going to re-enter the game, but I do see him on the sideline. I don't know this would be a good time to bring him back in the game, but uh... he looks like he might be going back in the game. We'll see here. Nope. Stays on the sideline, but At it's least good. For his we, first teammates, you know, he wants to show up, show up there, and be out there with them. No, he looks good. I, it was good. We hadn't seen him at all, so I, you know, obviously feeling a little bit better to be out there with his teammates. And that is, I mean, I, I know it's the old adage of cliche: you you win together, you lose together. For sure. And it's obviously good to know he's not hurt, injured. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to the point he can't be out. Yeah, yeah it's good. At this point, as uh, Western's running the ball, you know, both teams are looking to uh, finish this game out here. Work that clock. Yeah. Although uh, with the fake field goal the other team ran earlier, you could see uh, all of a sudden a play action pass here and try to catch sure. them sleeping. Fanumi is going to pass. Nice catch made on the far side of the field. It does look by Wesley Gray. Just running a quick out, able to get a few yards on that play. It'll bring up a third down. Roughly six yards, ball placed on the 31 yard line. Wolves will need to get past the 37 to continue this drive, but I would assume with under two minutes remaining in the game, probably going to go for it on fourth down as well. Fanumi I back to the air, finds a man underneath. Open just short of the first down. Fanumi finding Jonathan, his target. Jonathan was, Lopez able to make that catch. And, uh, you know, next time he'll uh, just need to jump, go straight up the field. Uh, if, had he went right up the field, I think he would have been closer to getting a first down. But the defense was all, all the defense for Central Washington was able to uh, take him down, Kevin Haynes especially. They did give him the first down, generous spot. Western Oregon will take it. They'll get a fresh set of downs. Fanumiai back right to Lopez again. Lopez, nice little hook route, gets out of bounds, picks up eight yards on first down. And it seems like uh, Central Washington is blitzing again on that play late in this game. Uh, and they were able to have man-to-man -man on the outside and get that, that close to a first down. Second down and four on the 43-yard line. 
Fanumiai continues to pass, gets the ball underneath to Gray. Gray is wrapped up immediately and thrown down. And I'll say props to these uh, Western Oregon fans. Uh, most of the people are still in the house watching their team, supporting them into the end, even with uh, the big dis point disparity today. I was going to put the word in your mouth. Dispar I knew it. Disparity. I just had to work on it. You got to, you know, massage my, my shoulders a little bit. Get the there words you go, out. Michael. Get, get the words out there of my head. There you go. There you uh, go. Appreciate it. Disparity. There you go. <laughs> Third down and one for the Wolves. The pressure being shown. Fanumi off his back foot. Gets it to Portera. Way to keep the play alive with your feet and an accurate pass to number five. Now we got to have a game. We have 45 seconds to see if they can drive down here and uh, do stop this shutout. I like it. No field goals, though. I want a touchdown. Not so do I. No, I, I, I think it does show a little bit about the character of everybody out here. And it, it, it's not easy to play when you are getting shellacked. Fanumiai looking for a bigger play this time. He goes back to Lopez. Lopez turns it upfield inside the 20. And I'll tell you, I think there's going to be a quick timeout being called here. And this is going to be, I, I, I really like this. I mean, it's like, look, there is a man watching this game at home today. That happens to be my dad. And he tells me, like, look, you play all 60 minutes. You play all 48 in basketball. You play all nine. Oh, I thought they were going to run the clock out, so this is this is much better. I appreciate exactly. this. Exactly. There you go. Come on, <laughs> Philip Fanumiai. Lead this Wolves team into the end zone. Ooh, he's scary. He was looking at his receiver the whole time there, I, and he looks like he uh, just a shoe came off. Lopez seems to be the hot target right now. 15 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Philip Fanumiai driving Western Oregon down into the red zone. They've been here a couple times today. Maybe finally at the end of the game they can punch one in. Fanumiai seems to be having some shoe issues right now. And we now have 20 seconds on the clock. We can also call a timeout. And, and it looks like they're going to change quarterback up. Or maybe a shoe just popped back on. No, <laughs> it is what we call a wardrobe malfunction for Philip Fanumiai, and his shoe does not seem to be working. So one of those things you learn when you're about six years old is how to lace up your shoes <laughs> and tie them properly. But I got to give Western Oregon again, and, and the kids, maybe, maybe more than the coaching staff, you know, the credit for sticking it in, you know, sticking it in the game all the way to the end. Because, you know, this has not been a very fun afternoon for now three full quarters of being shut out. I mean, you can say four quarters, but I mean. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited for these next few plays just to see if yeah, they can exactly. put something in the end zone. You got it, you got it. I just want to know if he has his own shoe or if he had to, like, borrow somebody else's. Or the, uh, there's a one person on the staff usually that's the shoehorn person. <laughs> I didn't know they had shoehorn. Stick it in there. Yeah. Somebody's carrying one in their back pocket. Wesley Gray and Porter are going to be out on the far side of your television screen. Lopez on the bottom of your screen. Fanumi Eye on the 18 yard line. Hasty is the center fielder or the safety in this play for the defense of Central Washington. And they're looking to put pressure on Fanumiai. Fanumiai underneath, wow. Gray was open for a split second, and I got to give the defense all the credit in the world right there. Tyron it, Sams, I believe. That was, Sams just absolutely put out his mitt at the right, at the last second. I, I think yeah, Gray good play for, from everybody there. You know, he looked off his receiver, went back to the other side. But Sam's uh, put his hand up that last second to to possibly keep this shutout with a couple plays to go. Third and 10, 10 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Fanumiai gets the snap. He'll throw a fade. Lopez trying to, I think Hasty's going to get the penalty here. Yeah, it looks like a pa off, uh, excuse me, defensive pass interference. So what they'll get here, I'm guessing, Mike, what do you get? Is that a spot penalty, five yards, or is it? I'm not sure uh, where they do this one, two yard line or if, or half the distance to the goal. I think it's half of the options. Yeah. We're gonna get a report here, head referee. With no mic. He's gonna give us first down, they'll move the ball, we'll figure it out. My director, Ken Louie, tagging my ear, giving me uh, an earful and telling me what's going on, but it looks like they are gonna move this ball. I knew, I thought that my mic line. wasn't working. <laughs> Or I Not needed a, to leave. No, you're good. No mic. 
No mic. <laughs> Five seconds remaining. Western Oregon. See what he can do here. Western Oregon. Fanumi, I see the pressure steps up. He'll go to pass the ball, and I think we might get another penalty. Zeros on the clock. There will be no penalty. And Central Washington will complete what I consider to be as thorough a victory as you will see in a conference game anywhere in the country today as the number 10 ranked team comes to Western Oregon University in Monmouth, Oregon and wins 42 to nothing after being held scoreless for nearly the entire first quarter. Sadly, Nick Duckworth does not see any action in the second half after suffering a pretty tough injury on a blindsided sack. I don't know what much there is to say. We don't really need to look at the statistics. We look forward to the future. And we know that there are two more home games remaining coming up in November, like we said. November the 4th and November the 11th. We will have the final two regular season games and final two home games for Western Oregon University and the Wolves football team. I'm Matt Palumbo, and on behalf of Mike Brown, Director Ken Luiteg, and everybody at KWVT, football fans, wherever you may be, have a great day. Thank you for joining us today on Valley 17.